one time. And that's going to be difficult to do given that we've now changed it once ourselves and now Margaret's got edits and they don't show the original because the version Margaret was commenting on, for example, had changed the section that's near and dear to my heart that did not show a track change to what we'd presented on the six. So I just had an, an idea. We yeah, could take our did. version seven, not Margaret's, make that version eight that shows the track changes we did last week and anything we want to accept from Margaret or do based on the comments we received from the council can go into that V8 where those represent the final, that document's going to be what's presented to the council and so we never accept anything in that document. So did Margaret's version accept our changes? Is that what happened? No. Because I sent her I a track change. I don't think so. But what I'm saying is the track change version that was sent to Margaret did not fully, at least when I opened it in Word, the section about my, my little thing about audible expressions had been changed to different wording at our meeting on the 7th that she was then working from. I didn't agree to that wording on the 7th, the way it's worded right now. Oh, okay, and so it doesn't, show, it doesn't show any, but aside from that issue, it doesn't any longer show what was presented to the council on the 6th for that wording. And what we, what we need to figure out is how to show them what was on the 6th versus what we decide today, which could be what we decided last week, plus what Margaret said, plus what the other town councilors said. So we're really filling, we're adding three things to what we originally showed the council. And so I thought I understood what you said, Mandy Jo, about how to make that work, but I'm not sure I'm facile enough with all the different levels of accepting and rejecting changes that maybe I do know that. And Kathy's the one who's bravely taken on managing the document, so as long as the two of you understand it. But I don't, I understand that as a working document, we need to know here what changed between the 6th and the 7th, the 7th and you know what we decide today, but I don't think the council needs to see all those changes because they're gonna be get, get completely confused because how are they mm -hmm. gonna be able to follow them? I mean, I couldn't find our version from the 6th anymore in the version that went to Margaret, so I'm confused. <laughs> But if you think you two can work it out, that's awesome. It's a big load, I understand. So I'm not sure what the suggestion is. Um, go back to the, it may be the public comment one, the public courtesy one is the only one I, Shalini had sent in a comment to us uh, to add the word as you know, if it would be divisive or not. Um, and I added those words uh, because of the email. So that I think that's the only change I made that wasn't the change when we were group meeting as a group of four. Um, otherwise, they were changes. And we did have to make change changes, as in when we'd done an option one and option two, we were deleting the choices anymore and just putting the one preferred one. Um, and I think it would be too confusing to leave the old options in there, mm -hmm. okay. right? I can, I, I, can, I can understand that. Yeah. And I understand what you just said about that one particular change. And so, so we, we can just go revisit that one particular change, but then w again, what Mandy just said, which version do you think we should work we, from? We can either, I think Kathy, you can either just start with Margaret's and if we don't like her suggestions, we reject those changes, or we can start with the one we sent to Margaret before she put in and add in to that one anything we do. Those are the two options and relabel whatever that is, V8. Right. So. Right now, I have saved this on my computer as the seven with PB and MN comments in it. You know, so I didn't change it to an eight yet. So whatever we end up doing will become an eight. Is that what you're thinking? Okay. And so this one in track changes very clearly shows a Margaret change, and it doesn't identify the other changes as a group change because it was just the group changing it. But I think now when we make changes, it'll be... I'm used to word always saying who made the change, but it didn't show that I made the change while doing it. So we'll just, it will be in track changes though, okay. So do we still feel like we are going to be able to, based on that, get a version that will show people who aren't us, 
what changed from the sixth, not what changed from the seventh, and not what changed since Margaret. Yes, it'll be changed from this. It'll look like that to them. Yes, it will. It'll look and, like one set of changes. And for if I'm going to do these changes as we go along, someone is going to have to be reading along the PDF because the they were nicely right. organized. If people look through them, the PDF was nicely organized with following from the beginning to the end a bunch of different people's comments. And then at the end, one person, uh, one additional person sends in some very thoughtful comments that again, go beginning to the end, but they're not organized. At, so someone's got to look at those. The, the PDF is not completely front to back. It's multiple but, front to backs. Right, so yeah, people right. have to kind of look down at the bottom and at the beginning as we're going through with another edit, because some of them were questions, some of them were suggested word changes, some of them were, um, you could delete this whole section altogether, kinds of comments. Mm. So uh, I can't, I basically can't do both because no, I yeah. can't have two documents open at the same time, one in Adobe and one in Word. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, do, I do think it makes sense that unfortunately as laborious as it will be is that we will basically have to go through and use Margaret perhaps as our jumping off point since yeah. she has so many comments. I mean, not only the document itself, but to look at every place she made a change and I, then exactly. switch over all of us, not you having to, Kathy. Look at the PDF and go, was there something about 1.5? Okay. It, yes, there was something That's exactly about right, though. I'm just saying somebody I, else's yeah. eyes have to be doing exactly. PDF while we're doing. I've got the them both up on my computer. We have to so I just split my screen so I can see them both at the same time. Great. Your eyes are young enough that you can see that kind of font, which I is T. I say I could read them both. <laughs> <laughs> I can see them both. So just for minutes. Minutes clarification. I am, I, I am ready, yeah. Just for the minutes. Minutes clarification. The two documents we're working out of are Margaret's version and what is the second one? The other one is a PDF version where she took comments from separate counselors, redacted them, and provided it to us. When you, when you eventually do the minutes with the list of documents used, yeah. Shalini, you'll be able to just pull the two yeah. titles from our yeah, SharePoint. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You, you didn't open the word, you can open the okay. word. All right. Yeah, you gotta do the next step, which is right there, yeah. Where it said open in word. When you You'll want to make that bigger. Yeah. You'll want to make that this longer because one of these has my initials at the end, and you oh. don't want that one. You want the one with Margaret's initial that that doesn't sit. So you're looking for. You need to stretch this so that you can see it. I don't know how to do that. Okay, scroll back up to the top of this section, and then make <laughs> this section go up so that you're at like A oh, here. Okay. I know it's dumb. I don't know why it doesn't let you do that. And you need to go up to modify it and pull that over like you're in an Excel. Go a little bit to the left. See where it has the little line there. Oh, I didn't know. Now stretch that over. Oh, and now you can see that most of our doc folders are short names. But then now scroll down. Oh, and okay. Oh, look. You still get down. OK. Um, it should be it's this one or this one. Uh, the one that says Alyssa that's five minutes ago is not the one you want. The one that says Alyssa six, yeah, six o'clock yesterday is the one you want. Because that's the one with Margaret's comments. See how you can see it right oh, there? Oh, I have that one. Good. That one. So Fine. pop Fine. that open and then. I mean, this one, right? Or she can go over to the double dots and just download it. I mean, whatever right. you want to do, but you've got to get it. You have choices, it. but you have to get it. Well, you have to get it out of Microsoft Online to Word kind I of thing. I have that one. But now no, you no, need to no, hit the it. concept open in Word. Hit that. And now you should be able to see what Kathy was telling you. You should be able to see. <laughs> With oh, all of oh. Margaret's comments. Yeah, oh. Oh, that's actually the one that also has my comments in it. But you can use that one if you want, or you can switch to the other one. This document is also in the SharePoint under Working Rules Documents. It's the only PDF that's not in a folder. Go all the way down. This one? here. It is a flaw, a flaw, and we, we'll talk to IT, but the, when you just open in SharePoint, you can't see track changes, so it's yeah. a double step, and it, I find it better to 
download to my computer. I have a lot more control than the word online. But and you have to worry about it syncing so much. It's like it's there. You own it. Okay. I am ready. Yes. Okay. So you can ignore the ones that say Alyssa if you want, because I'm just, that's for my notes for today. Okay, so in 1.1, Margaret made a suggestion to us in terms of a rewording of in within that first sentence, making it clear that since we're not the only elected public body, maybe we should be specifying that it's the elected legislative body. So whoever worked particularly hard on that paragraph have thoughts about that? I appreciate what she was referring to, that we have school committee and library trustees that are all elected representatives as well, but. I, I was okay with just deleting the whole phrase as she suggested, instead of rewording the phrase. Which one are we on? Preamble, 1.1. So right here, why is Margaret's comment not showing to you? Margaret's comment should be expanded. It is on my version. It depends on what she's open. Even though she's open in Word, can you click on Margaret's name there and see what it says? Wow. That's really weird because I'm looking at the exact yeah, same no, document. I looked through this whole thing and I saw many places where it just said Margaret Nardwitz and it didn't wow. say any comment. That's maddening. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Well, if you sit your little box, you're going to make it bigger. See that little box up there? All right, so it's a little easier to read. And then are we in, go up and review. Yeah, is it showing full changes? Do you go? Oh, it's showing simple markup. Show markup. Just, just go, go up one here. more. Go, go to this little arrow. What's so this simple? Whoops. That's oh, what you want to do. See how you got it. Oh, okay. Magic. All right, so that seems like that should have been the default. You would think, right? It, it, That's it weird. Is. In every world I've ever worked in, except for here. <laughs> Unless so. someone, if someone saves it in simple, it, it simplifies it. It's So Margaret okay. made two suggestions here. She said either change it to elected legislative body or take that phrase out altogether so that instead it just reads the Amherst Town Council commits. I agree. I think that's perfectly strong as it is. I agree. So, Delete. Another set of eyes. Nice. And then she, that changes it from commit to commit. Lynn has a comment. Are you, yes. Are you also doing redacted uh, council comments? Yes. 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 We're, Mandy's That's what we're tracking those, Lynn, so between. we're going to try to any time. Yep. And, and it, any eyes will be helpful, because on any of these, if there's a comment, we should be taking a look at it, making a decision. Unfortunately, some people use page numbers, some people use rule numbers, and some people just said general things. So we're hopping around to try so, and make sure we capture So just all. as the full draft scribe um, duty. What I'm going to do is, sh it shows up in track changes as a delete, and I'm going to delete her comment. Okay? Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, because you Done. don't want the comment to show any. And then it changed commit to commits by changing that phrase too. Yeah, it, so it, I'm, basically, it the whole thing. I'm basically not doing anything because it's showing up in the track change change. So until we override or change, it will show up as changed. Okay, so it's like an, an accept of her comment. Cool. And then the next one is 1.2 purpose, which I don't think there's anything in the PDF about, which is the, the rules of procedure. She just reworded that a little bit to make it cleaner. These rules of procedure shall be observed as opposed to the rules of procedure that follow. So that seems... Oh, I thought okay. these were good edits. Yeah cleans it, makes it clearer. Sometimes we wrestled so hard with content that. We did have a suggestion in the, uh, in the comments from the counselors that we add the concept of legislative session as a definition, because we talk about legislative session in one place, but we've never, it doesn't talk about any place else, and it's not really a term everybody knows. So is that something um, you want to craft Mandy, Joe, and have can, we, type in. can we do it right now? And, yeah. I, and I've noticed they're in um, alpha order, so it'll become between the definition of counselor and MGL. Yes. Yeah, so um, I think 
we can craft something from the charter. So legislative session and then the word or the phrase legislative session. And since Shall it'll have phrases now instead of just words, the we should change the following words to the following words and phrases in the little top before charter, which had been deleted since there weren't any phrases. Um, so unless another meaning is clearly apparent from the manner in which the word or phrase is used, ah, the following words or phrases used shall have the following meanings. Um, we didn't have any phrases, so we got rid of that. Yeah, but now we, we'll have now a phrase. Have a phrase. Um, so legislative session, colon, the, word, the phrase legislative session shall mean the period of time during, I don't know, beginning on the first Monday in January following the regular town election, except when the first Monday falls on a legal holiday. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously reading from section 2.1b, which is term of office, and we should just say the term beginning and then just copy that term, that sort of language. And I can read it slower, Kathy, if you'd okay. like. Yes, and, okay. and I wouldn't mind it if you simplified it as you went, but well, I'm, you want I'm, to put I'm not sure we can. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, but so the word, the phrase legislative session shall mean the term that begins on the day town councilors are sworn in following the regular town election and ends when their successors have been sworn. Would that work? Give me the last part and ends. When their successors have been sworn. Sworn in. Carter just says sworn. <laughs> so. so so now that we have the charter words, okay, much I'm, of this I'm, rules I'm, document is a slightly user-friendly version. I, okay, I'm going to so read, read you, but she did actually just super edit it down. So I, I, I totally edited from so the charter. So here is, it's, I have legislative session colon. This phrase, so I don't have to repeat it, this phrase shall mean the term that begins on the day town councilors are sworn in following the election and ends when their successors have been sworn. I would say following the regular town election, put regular town in there. And for consistency, we actually should repeat the phrase legislative session because that's how we do it everywhere else in the document. And I put it in quotes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to read it back again. Legislative session. The phrase legislative session shall mean the term that begins on the day town councilors are sworn in following the regular town election and ends when their successors have been sworn. That's very clear. The then weird have been sworn, but I'll live with it. We could add the word in. I was just reading directly from the Turner. <laughs> add, add a word in if it makes it easier for people to understand. Please make it. I'm I'm so, make it I shouldn't be humorous, probably, but I, I think it, you swear at someone so you're sworn or, you know. <laughs> I used to say so the clerk can swear. You can swear at the clerk. Okay. So, 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 <laughs> so you get okay. Sworn in. Moving rapidly yeah. through our document. <laughs> we, exactly. we had a request. Uh, 1.6 is the next one. 1.6 is the next one that we had questions about. And I thought we very purposefully were trying to follow some of the charters 
philosophy here, but we were not trying to do what Margaret said, which Margaret said, go ahead and follow it fully and do the 14 days publication. And that I thought we decided that that was an excessive way of approaching a change to the rules was to put up 14 days notice on the town bulletin board as though a change to the rules was a change to a bylaw or some other substantial measure. But we were trying to incorporate the two separate meetings part of it just so that if you missed it one time and you know, gave people more time yeah. to think about it. So I'm missing the 14 day part, Alyssa. All I see is her having us read it to be more. No, she's she's suggesting that the process in Charter Section 2.10 oh, follow. Oh, do the whole do the whole process, which means but the whole thing. And I'm like, yeah, no, that's not what I, we want I, to do. You know, this was double. We have fixed this compared to what we we had already. At, when we presented it to the council, it was to be voted on at two separate things, and we changed what? it to red. Red at, I guess before. Before we well anyway because I'm not seeing our own track changes but was that the comment we got from from counselor do we have to vote on it twice Mandy? So, so the comment from the counselor was that the rule felt unnecessary completely um, it seems and then it says what the comment said was this rule feels unnecessary it seems like it would be better treated like a bylaw change read and discussed at two meetings before being voted on but I'm not clear why it needs to be voted twice at two separate meetings so that comment tracks with the change we already made okay so I think she made an edit. To, we've made this edit already. Why does it not show that we got rid of the two votes? But I don't I, I wonder if she accepted a change that deleted the two okay. votes. Yeah, so, that's what I wonder. So I'm fine. fine with the wording as it is right here in this edit, if people are fine with it. So the, assuming we're seeing the same edit, I see prior to final passage, proposed amendment shall be read at two separate meetings of the council. Is yes. that the wording Yeah, that's have? the wording I see. And I think we agreed that was the wording we wanted, and we appreciate Margaret's input on right. this one, but that's not what we were looking for. Right. Because no, we don't want to do that. No, that is what I'm looking at. So the, qu the question I have is should I, I won't do that right now, but should I figure out how to show that we used to say voted on twice? Because that seems to have disappeared from what we, it's what we show people. I, I can I fix it up saying. later. Um, yeah. It might be nice, but I'm not okay. sure it's absolutely necessary. You, okay, so then I'm deleting her comment, leaving her wording, and we're moving on. Yes, yeah, so it clearly some council, I mean, we had that comment that some counselors thought that was confusing. And so, yeah, the original, she must have accepted a change, right? Because I am bringing up the, the version that we gave to council, and Kathy's exactly right that that's, that's wording we subsequently fixed, but not yeah. the very first thing we gave so, to them on the sixth. So and the thing what I'm seeing once six. I delete her comment is this is in yellow. Um, should I leave the highlight in because we've changed it? I don't think we should do any highlighting this time. I okay, should, should I just, just remove that? Okay, so I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm going to remove highlighting later. Okay, so whenever I see it. So does it make sense to you, Kathy, that this is what Margaret must have been working from? Because isn't this what we gave? Isn't this what we gave the council originally? And then we changed it. No. Margaret wasn't working from that. We, she, she was working from the edit that I that sent her. That we made on the set. On the, that we that's made. That's when we changed it. You know, and but that's when we, so I'm just, we well, I can, as I said, I can fix, I know how to fix this. I could go back in oh, and put our words and do a strikeout so we can show the original. Um, that's and, very thoughtful. Thank you. Okay. You could just add the original in and then accept the original change. <laughs> and then... Right. Accept it and then delete it. <laughs> you, you, you've got <laughs> it. You, you know, I'll figure out how to get back to the original and then show the track change that changes it. Word is just not the most cooperative mm -hmm. animal sometimes. So. Should we leave the highlighting for counselors to know that? Follow but that's, the changes? that's what I'm wondering. So do we? Do but we isn't that the point of a track changes document? We were no. showing them track changes already. We didn't give them a track changes document before. We gave them a highlighted document right. before and with special yellow giving. and blue color coding. So now we're giving them um, a track changes oh, instead to okay. say, you saw this before, okay. now you're seeing this. Okay. okay. So um, just conscious of time. Right. I am going to, after we finish as much as we can of getting through everything, which we have to, 
I will remove all yellow. Could so we plan for time today? Uh, one, just because we knew we might have a lot of feedback. Um, so does that bring us to 2.1? Yep. And then I'm okay with Margaret's edit except for the fact that it shouldn't say members, it should say counselors. So she wrote, it originally said counselors may nominate themselves. She added other members or themselves. No, the word members doesn't belong here. It's counselors may nominate other counselors or themselves. And then she added no second is required. I'm okay mm -hmm. with that. I think changing members to counselors is good. I think she missed the period after required. I can't totally right. tell, but I think, I think it right. might not be there. I think you are right. I get what she was trying to get at, but members isn't a term we're using. Got it. And now we've got edits on the edits, but I think that's okay. Yep. And <laughs> did that, that section. 2.2 2 is what we did last week. Right. When you right. see red, that's our changes. It's blue in mine. <laughs> it's different color. It's in different, different colors people. depending on how many times I open it. Yes. I swear. It's yeah, like no, sometimes it, it's purple. And well, it will be. Di basically, Margaret's color is one color and our color is another, whatever colors yes, you see. They, they yes. contrast. So do we have any, Mandy, you're tracking as we go through, the, if we got counselor comments? In, in, in section two, the, the only comment is... Um, it said on page four, but it's in the clerk of the council section. Should the power of the clerk to appoint assistant clerks be recognized? Um, it might be helpful that the role of anyone acting on the clerk's behalf be recognized and authorized. I didn't exactly knew what that, know what that meant. I didn't know if, if, if he, that person, he, uh, <laughs> Mr. Steinberg, was trying to get at the idea of that to be clear that, of course, the clerk of the council then has her own power to say another person who's in rather than that we have to vote on it because at town meeting for example if the town clerk couldn't be there at the beginning of the night we'd have to say tonight our clerk is such and such person and so he might be thinking about that because then it's like oh thank you so much for for filling in for so and so well we that don't was know. our leg old legislative process. this comment came from it didn't come from the town manager margaret because that we're seeing theirs in here right. so so i have no idea you know to me, it's fine for her to choose an alternative. Do we have to give her that power in our rules to allow it? It doesn't I, I think it's two parts. I think he's asking, do we have to give her the power? And I, I don't think so. I think we can just say she sends who she sends, and we just know that. And I think the other thing he's asking about is that actual vote we used to have to take at town meeting, and I don't see any reason why we'd have to do that yeah. under our charter. That's like a town meeting. Thing, but it was a thing we used to do at town meeting when we had a substitute clerk. So we don't have so to do it. So it's our things. decision. We don't have to do anything here. I, I think so because I since I, Margaret I'm, didn't ask for it, it tends to yeah. make me think that she believes she has that authority already. That. Yeah, that she assumes that's you know we appointed the clerk. The clerk performs duties. If the clerk can't be there, I mean, as president, do you see that differently, Lynn? If the clerk can't be there, should she, does she need to like do anything to say somebody else is coming? I don't know. I don't think we should be. I don't think we should be bound by previous rules of town meeting. I think this is fine. Yeah, because we might have a different clerk at literally every time. Arguably. We could. It just means we'd have to go through this election. Exactly. I can't see that as needed. Right. So, so within the the. The clerk one, Margaret, has raised the, do we mean three calendar days or do we mean three business days? That's in 23A2. And she read, raised that a couple times. Yeah, the um, computation of time issue, which I thought we decided to we use. We were just going to assume the charter computation of time applies. Right. The question is, do we have to specifically say that? I, I don't think it's very important to define what you mean, whether it's business or calendar. Well, you don't do that, actually. You That's can do that someplace else, wherever you say days. And whenever you want to not do it, do it, just say it differently. But otherwise, days will mean. So if I may, there is no such thing as business days and not business days. There's computation of time, which is already in the charter, and which talks about 
holidays and not holidays. And it doesn't, the way we normally think, like business days, is not the way the charter thinks. So we could just mirror the charter language, which is section 9.5. Yep. That, that section actually replies, states in computing time under this charter. So we could say in computing time under these rules. Yeah, where can and then just copy it the directly bank? into a new 1.6 and move 1.6 to 1.7 right after definitions. Yeah, because it's not really a definition. It's not a definition. It's an overall right. thing, like authority is. Or yeah, like parliamentary procedure. We could is. just Computation essentially of time is a new rule. Or yeah, it's fine. So um, rather than. I mean, you could dictate it to me now, or it's we could. Five just, lines long. So lines. why don't you just go to the charter? It's charter section nine point five. On page forty nine, for easy. Well, okay. forty nine of the whole. You know, so reports, here's yeah. a, a thing that I, when we were looking across, other towns rules, I found it very helpful. To not have to be. Cross referencing something to understand what a term is. And so in this case, if, you know, I understand we don't know what a business day is, maybe um, it used to, Mandy had suggested, and I liked it, simplifying it to days rather than 48 hours or 38 hours or whatever. But it's, I think it's really useful for people to be able to see this sentence next, rather than cross reference to say, are we, when we say two days, do we mean if the meeting is Monday, is end of the day, Friday okay, or is end of the day Saturday okay? Uh, um, when when does what need to happen? So that's the purpose of computation of time. I know, but if if I see three days listed here, then I, as a human being, have to go back to a definition. Say when computing time, do the following. I still, you know, it's a lot of work for me to know what three days is. So I'm, I'm just saying, is there any way we could do it within here? And if the term business day doesn't work, you know, we ran into this only once since um, I've been serving. And it was, we couldn't easily post a, ch post a finance committee uh, on a Thursday because a Monday was a holiday. And so we didn't have the one extra day we thought we had for posting. Uh, you know, so it would have normally been fine because it's a Tuesday meeting. And it became, uh oh, you know, we don't have a three day before we post the meeting. You know, so I, I'm, I, I'm fine with doing this now. I just think maybe we can think of later a way of just uh, to the clerk, but all, to all of us, you know, on committee. When is it? that we have to, do we have to get it in on a Wednesday if the meeting is on a Monday? I'm just looking for something simple. I really appreciate that because the note I made was, yeah, we're going to use computation of time because, right, we'll be standardized, but what does that actually mean? Yeah. So and I, so maybe can we, can if we made a new rule, like one point, a new 1.6. 1. Yeah, 1. 6. I'll, 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 I'm so totally could agreeing we give an with that. Example? Would that be like totally outrageous to give an example of that means, because the other thing we have to keep in mind is open meeting law counting of days is actually a completely separate concept from computation of time. Those are actually two different things. Yeah. No, I'm fine with it. So if we don't have to resolve this right now, my, my suggestion so which we can get things that are a little bit more substantive would be uh, do what we just decided. I'll plunk in 9.5. Yeah. And between tomorrow and the meeting or something, if someone comes up with one sentence yep. that gets added somewhere so everyone can understand what we mean rather mm -hmm. than cross-referencing and trying to figure out what the long paragraph means. Okay. Because there are a couple different places we use that, and so we'd have to yep. use it consistently. Exactly. It's, it's not the, just the clerk. Did it's we use anything greater than seven days in this set of rules? We do have a 14, don't we? Okay. Because if we didn't have anything greater than seven, we could shorten the definition and easily provide an example. But if we have something greater than seven, we'd need two examples. Okay, so then, then let's, let's just go back and think about it a little bit, um, even if it's by the end of this time, because I can easily copy and paste a long paragraph in. And then I would just delete her comment. So we can all put our creative thinking hats on Got it. that.
So you're right, that's one of the most practical applications that people actually need. Um, I have a question about formatting. So in 2.2, we moved to the C rule four, C rule three, and in 2.3B, it just says rule 2.1, rule five. What did we decide to do with the C's? <laughs> like C, S E E, C rule, and we have some that still have them and some that still don't, so I'm confused. What did we decide? Kathy, you're the arbiter yeah, of those things. Yeah, the, the way we did it, and you'll just have to show me where we didn't do it, but where, where we were referencing, if you really, all, we have a whole long thing on agenda, so you've got to yeah. go look over it. That's where it says C. Um, where it was just this is the rule, we didn't use the word C. So where am I missing a C? So if you look at 2.2, 2, yep. and the president shall, Yep. And then it says prepare agendas, and my version says C yep. underlined. And then if you, if you scroll down to 2.3, and you look at duties of the clerk count, the council, item B, mm -hmm. it says B1, preside over the election of the president, and then it says rule, but it doesn't say C rule. I just missed it. Oh, well, I, that's okay. I just couldn't remember yes, which but, way uh, we went. Three and four <laughs> are the same. B, was. three, and four assist the president with public participation and provide minutes. Okay. But we decided to go. I couldn't, I honestly couldn't remember. I, which I think way it we was if, if, we, if we weren't expounding there and there was another rule that expanded on what that requirements were, it got C in front of it. If it ah. didn't, it didn't get C in front of it. So. We'll just throw a bunch of C's in. 2.3 B. B. Yeah. All right then. It wasn't meant to be different. That is fine. Section 3 had a lot of counselor comments. Rule 3. I want I want to ask a question actually about this before we get into each of those comments. So just in terms of my recollection of our conversation before and after the meeting of the 6th, under 3.2, regular council meetings, under E, and we went around about how to do the 10 p.m. thing, aside from the council comments, when did it become meetings shall aim to end? Mm -hmm. I don't remember us ever using Th that. Phrase. That was, I think, placeholder language because I was gonna come up with new language and I have three options for us today. Okay. Okay, because so, one of the things that, that I found, yeah, okay, so once we know that, yeah. all right. So let's just start so with So let's start at the beginning, 3.1, presiding officer, oh, that was one of Margaret's suggestions too, is do we want to consistently say, we definitely don't want to see chair, but do we want to say presiding officer or president, do we want to, she did it both ways herself, actually. At one point she said president we, or presiding officer, which one do we want? We. We changed it last time to, and I may have missed some, to try to, later on, not just say the president, to say or presiding officer, um, because it won't always be the president. In this very first time, mm -hmm. it, we're saying the president shall be the presiding officer, unless she's not, he's not there. So it, I didn't do it, but if I didn't catch it, we changed it because we used to say chair and we got rid of chairs and put presiding officer wherever possible. So as we go through, okay. you know, these are track changes okay. in there where I tried to catch it. So I, when I remember is the first substantive comment on 3.1 and I actually agreed with it, why should the chair of the finance committee be our second choice? Why not just go right a bit, right away to figure out who's queen, queen or king for the day. Yeah. I've had that feeling all along. But no. I assume <laughs> I somebody yeah. picked so, that so up I, from I agree else. with it, and I, you know, there's no particular reason. I think we picked it up a couple towns, did it this yeah. way, and there's no reason to do it this way. So if everyone's fine, I'll just cross out, and I'll say second, the council shall elect a pro, you know, just change it. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. that's fine with me. I still have a question after Kathy's done typing that. That was the only that. PDF comment on 
Um, so what, tell me again what the answer was, not did we catch them all. Did we decide to go with the term of our presiding officer throughout after this, or did we decide to go with president or presiding officer as the term of our, like the long phrase, which Margaret suggested at one point, or just presiding officer? I thought we went with presiding officer, I, but now I'm not sure. I thought we went with just presiding officer if it made sense. If it makes sense, fine. Yeah, you know, so certain things have to stay president because okay. it's the president's, not the presiding officer. It's a president thing. Like appointments. Like appointments example. or okay. agenda setting. Like what's the order potentially the change if you're going to be able to okay. change it that might. Uh, I think presiding. Yeah. I think that works better because it makes it clear that there's a difference. When yes. when you were rec referencing committees, we really needed to change it because in that committee yeah. section, yeah. That's totally fine. I was just making sure I understood what our term of art was. Cool. And then the meeting thing is, should we want some of the feedback we got, especially since we just had the November thing is item C, 3.2 C. Instead of specifically calling out those months, should we say something more generically about our choices or are we trying to show people we might only meet this often so they don't be worried that we're not meeting very much? Or so can we start with here? A? Oh, I'm sorry. Because right. <laughs> there were comments, I think, on nearly think every on single a? point. Yeah, yeah. No, yes, I think I we should just go in order. Yep. So A was consider amending 3.2A to add, quote, unless amended by a majority vote of the council. Ah, right. Um, we discussed and realized, you know, and it was talking about November, the November right. change. Um, so, so tell me. Um, the, the phrase, you know, wh where a do is I put the phrase? At yep. the end, okay. with the schedule adjusted as needed for holidays, comma, unless amended by a majority vote of the council. And that actually kind of covers C then. So, so this is a means of making it easier to do that than amending the rules generally? Um, it makes it easier to say we're typically meeting on the first and third, meaning twice, um, unless we have to find another time or we decide we're not going to meet twice a month. To me, it would be any of those changes. Which means we could potentially delete C completely. completely. Yes, and I think we could get rid of the, the the in the months of July, August, and December, because as one of the counselors' comments was correctly that we decided to meet just once in November because of this year's particularly where the November dates fell, so we could take out the July, August, and December. Well, we could just take C out altogether. Yeah, just right. del I'm That's deleting great. C. Just right. delete could, C. Could you read back the end of A to us, Kathy? Because that sounded okay. like it really covered everything. So regular council meetings, everything up until the schedule adjusted is for needed for holidays. Yeah. Now it says comma, unless amended by a majority vote of the council. That seems really good because it's the council's decision then, and I think that does cover everything. That's great. One comment that said we could just say in 3.2a with the schedule adjusted as needed and get rid of the four holidays. And it was talking about 3c, the one that we just deleted to go up there. I, I, I like the as holidays because that's like the automatic adjustment is for holidays and then the council can vote beyond that. I think it makes Me the too. public's expectations clearer what they should figure. That's good. I like it. And what is the yellow shaded on aim to end at 10? <laughs> Do we, my, my suggestion is unless, unless we, Mandy, you said you have a few ideas. I have a couple here. options. Okay. Um, so option one, I'm just going to read them all and then we can discuss, would be any time after 10 p.m. a motion to adjourn shall be in order even if agenda items have not been heard. Option two, meetings shall extend past 10 p.m. only if the council votes to extend the meeting. Option three, any time after 10 p.m. upon objection by a counselor, the council shall affirmatively vote to continue the meeting. Could you read number two again? Sure. 
Meetings shall extend past 10 p.m. only if the council votes to extend the meeting. And if we operated under that, um, someone would say it's 10 o'clock, should we keep going and we have to take a vote? Is yes. That how we perceive that? But yeah. I think that one's the clearest of the three. And Lynn, but any thought not. about how to, it's, we're trying to, well, clearly what we're trying to do is say, we have a goal, if at all possible, of ending at 10, and we should at least take a, a breath at 10 o'clock to figure out if we keep going. And so how do we, to me, it's the, it's the take a breath, are we gonna keep going? And what I liked is, I also like not bring up a brand new topic, you know, like you wouldn't stop in the middle of a conversation, but you might not bring up another big item. So I wouldn't wanna always have to stop at 10 and take a vote. So that was the shall aim to end. But um, I, the more I think about this, the more I don't like it at all um, yeah. and would delete the whole thing because you know there was a comment about if we're gonna keep this in, we need to be stronger in the, the, order, of the, the order of the agenda and allowing the president to change stuff. But what I was thinking about was if the president doesn't know whether things will be extended, if there's an executive session scheduled, that executive session is going to be called at 9 or 9.15 in the middle of a meeting when there are people still here and you're going to have to say, and we're coming back into regular session, and that's going to have to happen any time an executive session is scheduled because the, the president's going to have to guarantee that we can do the executive session um, prior to that 10 p.m., and that kind of Heart, you know, puts the attendance of a meeting by the public in that weird spot of, oh, we're just gonna go into this room for 30, 45 minutes and then we're gonna get back to potentially whatever you were really here for. I think it might really screw up the predictability for the public if we have a, you must affirmatively vote because that would require the president to hedge on whether that will actually happen and start moving agenda items around, which is less helpful to the public. I, and I, I know it's logistically that issue, but trying to s signal to ourselves and the rest of the world that we can't get our business done in three and a half hours. <laughs> You know, that we, we would hope that we could get our bit business done in normal times in three and a half hours, but it may be longer, because that's what 10 o'clock is. It's three and a half hours from the time we started. So anyone who wants to sit with us, you, you can see we keep people. We still have an audience usually at 10 or 10.15. 10 they start, lit, they're all gone pretty much by 11. <laughs> you know, so that's, I think that the notion of this was just for ourselves also, can we, try to be efficient with the use of our own time with a, in normal time expectation, we could do this without making it so rigid that we're um, ending a meeting before we're ended. So that's the only reason, and Mandy, deleting it all together, you know, even if we said 10.30, it's four hours, you know, so it's something that says, do we need to, because we're, we don't, we're not thinking very well at the end of four hours. I mean, it's, it's not just efficient, but we, we're racing often like I've been here long enough, you know, and sometimes we should be tabling things for the next meet, you know, saying, can we continue this? And people don't have that discipline right now to know how to end a meeting if we're not in the middle of a discussion. So that's the only thing of sig singling it, signaling it without making it rigid, which is this weird, weird, <laughs> right? And weird the, phrasing right now, right? Yes, and so yeah, aim, aim is a little awkward for me, but I get not wanting to be as official as our previous legislative body was. Our previous legislative body had to affirmatively act to bring up something new, not in the middle of a conversation, right? We could be in the middle of a warrant article and it could run till 10.15, but if it was, 958 
the body had to affirmatively act to move forward. I can understand not wanting to have to take that extra step every time because it does derail things, right? Because you don't want to stop in the middle of a conversation. But I do think that the signaling part is important and I disagree with the counselor who said that, oh, well then we have to make it clear that the, the president can rearrange the agenda. It already says that in our agenda section that the president can do that. And when it comes to executive session, if we're planning executive sessions for late at night, we're not making the best use of our time. Executive sessions should either be at the beginning, in my opinion and experience, should either be at the beginning of a meeting, at an earlier meeting, or at the very end of a meeting where we tell the public we're not coming back this middle of the thing. And so I don't want to try and get too bollocked up in that when I think we need to depend on the president to have their, you know, to figure out what the situation is on the ground tonight and how long things are taking. And as Kathy said, to be able to say, you know what, we have too much to do. We're going to put this one off. We're going to finish this one. We're going to work on this one another day so that people don't feel like everything, if it was on the agenda, it has to be done that night, whether we're here till midnight or not. I guess my point was, if you've got that in the rules that there has to be an affirmative vote, the agenda order will regularly switch around, especially if there's an executive session, and that's not really helpful to the public, and that's because it yeah, becomes no longer predictable. Maybe, oh, well, we need to make sure we get to appointments, so we're not going to do discussion first. We're going to do appointments first, even though you were here for discussion, and appointments might take three, you know, it, it will kill the predictability of the agenda order, I think, if we require in the rules of vote. We never had any predictability in our previous form of government. So I appreciate that concept, but the select board and town meeting were both free to choose to take things in whatever order they took them in, and the public understood that that was sometimes frustrating. And so I want to make sure we're balancing our ability to do our work is more important to me than that the public be able to predict what we're doing at 9.15. Yours? Well, this, um, the, the language that we have in there now that arguably isn't very good language, it doesn't require a vote. Right. I mean, we could, that it makes it looser. It just tell, you know, it just says that we have the goal of ending at 10. Or we could say, if we say we should. We have a time check at 10 or something. You know, and shall is the wrong that. word probably because it should strive or, yeah, or something. Right. You, know. you could maybe just get rid of shall completely. Meetings aim to end at by 10 p.m. Yep, that that's less. Yes, <laughs> that that's less likely to happen than uh, not having a new agenda item. So I think that's more forceful, or it's more specific. At least we can we we can accomplish that. Ending a meeting at 10 is not. It doesn't seem like a reachable goal. It's. So, Shalini, could you just restate, do you, are you suggesting we add some other words in? That was, what was your recommendation, that we don't add new agenda items after then? Ah, specifically addressing yeah. that point. I'm sorry, please, Lynn. I could see, first of all, I, the 10 o'clock rule was a town meeting rule where they were going to either meet one or two days of that, ne of that same week or the following Monday. We don't have that luxury, okay? We could. We could say we'll be convening back here tomorrow at 6.30 and all of you'd shoot me. <laughs> so I... We couldn't without breaking up a meeting law, though. Well, we there you go. A whole We'd have to meetings. post it ahead of time. That's right. So we, the, first, the earliest we could do would be whatever. Or I could say, you know, this agenda is so long, I'm now posting a meeting on Thursday for Tuesday night. You could. I don't think you want this, okay? And, I, and the reason I... And what I've tried to do since, you know, seeing this, and I heard it like all of you did, is to throw up that timeline. And then I see it going off track. The other piece I just want to point out, and that is usually executive sessions are something we can't delay, either because we don't want counselors to be caught off guard on something, or it is a time action that is sensitive and needs to be acted on in executive session so we can move forward publicly. So as much as I, I want to do whatever works to get our meetings over early, I like going home like anybody else, um, I want to make sure that we don't 
end up in some unreasonable situation with, an un with the realization that sometimes we don't meet for two more weeks, sometimes we don't meet for three more weeks, we're trying to cut out an August meeting where we won't meet for a month, or 30 days, we'll meet within each month. So I just want to be careful what you do to your, what we do to the council. Whatever you do, I'm going to comply by that. So I just want to put in another plug for, I, it's water under the bridge, but I don't believe there's ever been an emergency where, or timely issue where we needed to have executive session in the middle, except because that's when it was decided to do it. And so I think that's one of the confusion points, is I want to be able to let the public go home after executive session. And so that's something we can bear in mind for future, and that we don't need to address in here, because that's just like an informal conversation thing. And I appreciate not wanting to take the active vote, but, but, but yet I want to send some sort of signal. So I liked what you said about bringing up new items from the standpoint of guidance, like this is what you can expect but there's always exceptions. I Does a new item constitute approval of the minutes? Does a new item constitute the town manager's report? Does a new item uh, count, uh, include the president's comments or other comments or counselor suggest, suggesting new stuff? Those are what we put at the end of the agenda. Right, and, so right now we've got no link to items at all. Meetings aim to end by 10 unless the council otherwise determines we had deleted, no item may be brought right. forth, you know. So, and, and let me just say, I think it recently, for example, I think the um, town manager last time we met shortened what he might have said, and then two or three of us had questions right. uh, that, of things we wanted him to state publicly because they were in his report. Uh, if we don't pass our minutes, we are hearing it from the public, and that's not okay either. And if I don't come back and say to you, oh, and by the way, um, you know, I had approved this three parking spots in front of a bank for three hours, then legally I haven't met the letter of the law. And the other, I, so I just want to be careful what right. we've done to ourselves right. and what the public, I like the signal, I just want to be careful. Could it be discussion items? Like all of these seem like routine minutes, town manager's report, and we may have questions, that's fine. But anything that involves brain power, a lot of it, that's hard for me. So I think the problem is we would like to do this, but if we put in you have to vote to continue, well, and, and that's not what's in there right now, um, but but even brain power, we ran into this with committee reports. Um, the committee reports were happening late, and then multiple meetings later, there were counselors that were saying, well, I don't think that was reported on, and we never heard. Well, it was, but it was done at 11 or 11.30 at night. So that requires brain power, and suddenly then you're saying, well, we can't do, th that's brain power, and so we can't do that. Um, you know, it, I, I, I'm to the point where I would just rather see nothing um, because, you know, I think we elect a president to set an agenda in an attempt to balance what can we, what needs to be heard at that meeting and be done at that meeting versus how long is that meeting going to be. And that is a balancing, an act of massive balancing of what can be pushed off one meeting because you're looking at an agenda going, this is really long, but we can't push it off because that agenda is going to be even longer. And so can we get it done this one? We don't want to shortchange our committee reports. You know, they can take a while. And I think as counselors, we might just have to recognize, at least at this beginning, we shouldn't have a hard time and we shouldn't have, this is what we're going to do and we're going to do this. At, it's good to have that goal, but the, unless the council otherwise determines it, I'd be more fine with our goal is to end by 10, period. That doesn't, but then why is that a rule if there's no force to any of it? Like if we're just gonna have, there sh if you're gonna put a rule in, you should have force, but I don't, I'm less and less likely the force because sometimes you just gotta sit there until the business is done. Um, 
if, the, ahead, if the rule was left to say what it says, including unless counselors determine differently, it leaves open the door that, you know, someone on the council could say, you know, I move to adjourn. And someone else could say, I second that. And then someone could point out, you know, we have a couple things here I think we really need to do. And let's get those done. And the person who, you know, and reason prevails and we get those done and we move on and adjourn. I do not mind having this statement in here. Okay, I've been trying to aim towards that by showing you timing on stuff. In fact, as I looked at the agenda, proposed agenda for whatever, the 20, 20th, I guess, um, I just moved yet one more thing around uh, and set up trying another way of getting it done before we bring it to the full council for discussion uh, because in this case, the discussion items aren't the big issue. The big issue is going to be the votes, including the rules, and the appointments. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to look and balance the what I'm thinking about. Uh, but you know, it, it, I don't mind the rule being here the way it is. I don't like the idea of interrupting a meeting to take a vote to continue. Okay, so th so this is general enough to allow for what I call taking a breath if we look up at the clock, you know. When, when you say the way it is, which words are you I, I referring I think it's to? the one I just read. Meetings aim to end by 10 p.m., comma, unless the council otherwise determines. Yes. I, I, I don't have any it's a signal. It's loose. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And it sounds a little more like a rule. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. I mean... I want to get back to just a, a moment, the idea of with force, because not lots of things in here can't be enforced. So I, I noticed that in another counselor's comment that, well, if you can't enforce it, then why is it a rule? Well, a lot of what we're setting up here is we're setting up expectations. We can't enforce that we have a dialogue session. Like We can just say we want to do things. And so I think this is a perfectly fine thing to leave it open like that while it sends the signal to everyone. Okay, I, I suggest we move to the next 3.5. Yes. And Margaret's got, I think, some edits and some substantive, I'm not sure if there's others. It's on 3.5a is the first one I see in the track changes. She added the council is participating remotely because we talked a little bit about how to not mix together remote participation and not remote participation, this, but it's no, true that you have to say if there are any counselors. This is fine, yeah. So, sounds good. It's just that A2 that counselors present Councillors absent and councillors got it. And I've yeah, deleted the comment on that we have to have it. So, is there anything else in three five in councillor comments? Um, yeah, mostly in B three five B about record of votes and right. or two or what I, I think we renumbered. So, so um, I'm, I'm trying to one of them. Rec I'll, I'll just read the ones I can find requiring draft minutes to be completed within four days of a meeting is unreasonable for council meetings and for committees. The clerk has other duties and people taking minutes for committees. Now often councilors are already finding it a challenge, challenging to manage their time. Um, see my second general comment above. The second general comment was the rules should not add responsibilities or make service more complicated. Rather, they should be developed with the goal of making our work more efficient. Um, another comment on 3.52 or B, I think part B is a great aspiration but is an unreasonable burden on our clerk of the council and should be removed. Part A seems more reasonable, um, though I would provide the clerk a bit more flexibility and suggest extending the time frame from a day after to two days after a meeting, so that must have been the votes. Um, and another one said, council meetings, record of votes two days after the meetings and final minutes posted one week after the meeting was the other comment on this section about votes and minutes. I want to just make a real quick comment on that final minutes thing, which I think, again, shows a fundamental misunderstanding of what we're talking about, just as came up at 
Council on the 6th, is that we've got different varieties of minutes. There's no reason why final minutes that we voted on on a particular council night wouldn't be up the next day. That's not, that doesn't make any sense to say it takes a week to put those up. It's the draft minutes and the votes that we've been focusing on here in terms of getting information back out to the public. And the gap that I see here, I think, is significant in that in the past, I don't know what they'll say Thursday night, but in the past, the Division of Open Government, one of their theories about minutes has been that they presume that, which is false on their part, I think, that they presume that you will have the minutes ready from the previous meeting at your next meeting. Yeah, the, thing, so the thing that, and so we're trying to at least make that, and I feel like Margaret's pushing it out even further to say, well, it might be from two meetings ago, and I, I totally appreciate the concept of having them ready for at least the next meeting, which is not to be confused with our desire to get things out to the public as well. But I find that minutes are far less useful to me if it was from what happened three meetings ago than if it's from the meeting that I'm walking into now reminding me what happened at the meeting two weeks ago. Okay, um, but we've got two related issues least, here. Yeah. No, we've got, no, because as we, link this also to committees. So the committees, when we talk about minutes with committees, we're what are cross-reference, and we can decide whether we want to have, delete the cross-reference. So the cross-reference would impose on committees what we're imposing on the council for its regular meetings. We um, could definitely delete the cross-reference to 35B, yeah. so the I publication, should, and, and just cross-reference A, what they have to include. And then Margaret is pointing out that the council meets more often than every two weeks. So we'd been thinking when we said at the next meeting that we're giving her two weeks because we've got all these times where there's a special meeting, we've called a meeting, we have a hearing, and it's clearly we're not gonna impose two days turnarounds on this. So her suggestion as I read the track changes um, is to allow She's striving to have 13 days as be the goal, you know, two weeks, which then would potentially work for committees. I'm finding, and this is just, I shouldn't probably make an aside comment, but on the committees I've been on, including ad hoc, the minutes are often available, but no one reads them in the committee, or the chair gets them and others don't know they're there or they're posted on SharePoint and nobody knows to go look at them. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's sort of like some minute takers are being extremely prompt in committees. It's just the minutes languish. Um, you know, the one with our goals ad hoc committee, Lynn, we actually had minutes for almost every meeting. We just hadn't moved them from draft to public. <laughs> you know, we hadn't taken that step. Um, so, so I don't mind the 14 days, you know, as, as within the, as a, because it's our clerk who's having to turn these around, and she's been really good if two meetings happen in the interim between our regular, we get a set of minutes for all of them. You know, we've been getting like the special hearing minutes and the other minutes. So I thought this was, uh, useful, her phrasing was useful. So I don't know whether it addresses the comments you got from the counselors, Mandy. I think if we remove the cross-reference, we address the comments about counselors and council taking minutes themselves for the committees, the committee minutes, um, where we, we just need to be careful to cross-reference only the content of the minutes, not the publication of them. Um, that'll address one of those comments. Right. Um, and, and she's done the, as counselors, we get them three days before, you know, we, before we have to approve them, we're getting them, which is a nice goal. <laughs> I, I would keep the B1 at one day. I know a lot of people are saying two. Um, Margaret asked for two, and counselor comment said, what about two? Um, I found out last night that the town manager, by 7.15 the morning after a regular meeting, has out two um, people in town, employees in town, a summary of the meeting with actions for them to be taken 
that, that also includes the votes we took. So I'm not sure why we're getting pushback on one business day after when someone's already creating a document that would comply with that if you just modify it a little bit and throw it up on the website. Beyond, that's not even the just the piece of paper that records that the clerk's recording the votes on. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to move from one day to two on A at all. Um, I, I'm not sure where I stand on two and her added three. So can we stay focused on that vote, that uh, record of votes issue for a moment? Because I actually think that one's a little simpler in some respects since we moved to that one. So other thoughts on that? Because I thought this, this body was pretty clear on that um, in previous. And now we've read the comments. And how do we still feel about it and what you just found out? So I, I? I agree with what Mandy said. You know, um, I think we have that document. So as long as no one thinks they have to create a new document for this posting, it just can be headed record of votes taken last night and posted. I'd agree with that. Go ahead. The, is there a problem if, it, if you're late at night, like sometimes ending at 12, does that make a difference for the town manager to get this up in? I, technically, I guess if we end at 1230, the day after the meeting is Wednesday, <laughs> not Tuesday. Right. <laughs> so, right. so, so, and, and let's be clear, I mean, that's the town manager's prerogative to have done that, right? We've had town managers do that, and we've had other town managers who didn't do that, and that's a great way of him communicating with staff, but it strikes me as nothing short of really bizarre that staff knows about our votes prior to the rest of the world knowing about our votes. There's no reason for staff to know that first. So again, just like a modified version of his document. Whether And, and when somebody said it would be like a scribbled hand sheet, you know, I'm fine with that. It's, I'm it's fine, fine with that. I'm totally okay with that. We don't care <laughs> you know, how pretty it is. <laughs> this, this leaves open what that record looks like. It can be a photocopy right. of the handwritten notes. Right. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. So then, can so that's we go the to, easy one. Can we go to B2 <laughs> then? B2, we've got a new B3 and a B2 modified that we at the council get any minutes. I read this as any minutes we're going to approve, we get to see it three days before, which I find great. Mm -hmm. so, so I question three though, because the, and the reason yeah, I do, I'm just staying on two. Yeah, so two, I, two still makes sense to me. I was just concerned about how it fit with three, because three is nude language. And I think that, I think, you know, she's trying to get across what she explained to us in text about, but I think that we're being too focused on this crazy time of year when you have to have all these extra council meetings because of the budget. And I don't necessarily feel that it needs to be every special council meeting is also included in there. So I wonder if we just get rid of three, do four, and minutes of regular council meetings shall, shall be approved by majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting. Just start throwing just, in just regular put, put into regular, some of these. Regular. Because regulars are I like regular. That. Like yeah. I, I think that rather than trying to bollocks ourselves. I think up that over takes crazy stuff. care of it. Yeah. You know, yeah, regular. I like since that. Since Lynn has just told us we will run longer meetings rather than have extra meetings. <laughs> Two <laughs> we, we can count on <laughs> you know, but in general. <laughs> no, I, I think you can do two with get rid of the word next and leave Margaret's added's in um, prior to the three. council meeting at which the minutes are to be approved. So it's not the next one. It's just we're getting them three days prior to whenever they're being presented. Um, ah, so took out the, the word next. The, and council, it's removed next. Got yeah, it. and maybe so delete our... three, her three, her added three, the 13 days, and then minutes from of regular council meetings shall be approved by the majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting. And two was our compromise from our original where we wanted to have it by the end of the business day, four days after the meeting, correct? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to need you to, um, so one is as is. Number two is as is. Two, sh I think 
my suggestion is to read the council shall receive draft minutes no later than three days prior to the council meeting at which the minutes are to be approved. Yes, the word yeah. next. And Mandy Jo, you didn't find out anything along those lines when you are, were getting information from the town manager or the clerk about their ability to get um, minutes out faster, did you? I haven't asked about minutes out faster. <laughs> I think that's a job for our president to ask. <laughs> <laughs> and then are we keeping minutes to be approved shall include minutes of all? No. no. Item three is just gone. D delete it. Yeah. And so the old item three, now item four, whatever it was is. Was the old item three. Minutes of regular council meetings shall be approved by majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting. And then that just leaves special meetings up in the air for, we don't have a rule on when they get approved. So we have one, two, and if it, once I fix the numbering, because it's doing four, even though I deleted three, but <laughs> minutes of regular council meeting shall be approved by a majority vote of the council at the next regular council meeting. And so we're getting the minutes one day prior to what we would usually get them, correct? You mean in comparison to current practice? Right. It's aspirational. <laughs> <laughs> Good. We have three parts this, Lynn. A uh, record of votes is available to the public by close of business at, after the meeting. We get the council shall repeat draft minutes no later than three days prior to the council meeting at which the minutes are to be approved. And number three is minutes of regular council meetings shall be approved by majority of vote of the council by the next regular council meeting. So it's making clear that we have, we're just talking about regular council meetings uh, in this expectation at our next meeting. We're getting them before the next meeting and we're, that's the meeting at which we're voting on them. <laughs> the, the only potential problem which we should just watch for when we have two meetings in a row because of missed things two weeks in a row. We should just, you know, we can suspend the rules for those meetings because that's going to be really tough, but right. um, when there aren't two weeks between meetings. But yeah. that doesn't happen too often. Luckily. So. And, and just to clarify, I still haven't gotten this. Is there any change in, in two from what the current practice is? Right now, you've been getting them, I think, on Friday. Um, so we would get it Friday, Wednesday instead of Friday. Yeah. We, we often don't get them before Friday, so. This would be Wednesday on our computation of time. So it, w it would increase. The it would increase of time. the amount of time we have. Right. But, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's yeah. why this cross reference, you'd have to understand that we're computing time not in days of the week. So three days doesn't mean Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay. So and what does yeah, that's really helpful for me because I actually, if I get them separately from this giant packet, yeah. I'm more likely to read them right. and do my minor, right. you know, sometimes minor or major. If I get them with ten other things to read, I sometimes don't read them as carefully. Yeah, and just for your information, I mean, we start at we start with draft minutes. We I. I have asked consistently that they send them to both me and Mandy Jo. Mandy Jo keeps some of the best written notes of meetings. And um, then after that review takes place, then we send them out to all of you. So that by the time we get to the actual meeting, the meeting, the minutes that are posted have pretty been have been scrubbed. So that's my only concern. I do have a concern though. I just want to this issue of posting draft minutes, is that still in here? No. It's been removed. No. Thank you. And uh, I ahead. would just like to, to I, I, I remember that Mandy Jo mentioned it, I think the last meeting that, you know, a big purpose of the rule is for the benefit of the public as opposed to us. And so two is really, 
you know, I think the other counselors are going to be fine with it because it's good for us. But um, it, you know, it, it doesn't really answer the public's complaints about they would like to have their minutes immediately. Um, and, you know, the possibility of having draft minutes. Actually, who does talk about draft minutes? It's, it's just we get the draft minutes. Yes. You know, and, and I, I do think uh, draft minutes that undergo multiple drafts is a difficult thing when it's minutes. So, you know, partial minutes going out to the public and better minutes going out to the public when there's substantive. Um, and in a few instances, counselors have given pretty substantive comments, you know, like you missed a whole section of a discussion or you didn't capture it and the clerk went back, watched the tapes and expanded. Um, so. And I want to make clear, Jesse, I hear you on that. I think we all hear you on that. Yeah. And I think what we're trying to do, given the reality we're facing, as much as I like to say we need to be aspirational in these, is that if we can get it set so that at least we can see them ahead of time so they're not just mixed in with the packet, which means that the process where they get them to the president and the vice president is going to have to back up also, because we're not talking about that in the rules, but given their current process, they're going to have to back up their timeline as well. And so if we can consistently get to the point where we're getting them three days ahead and we're publishing those votes, we're doing the best we can at this moment to address the public's concerns. Maybe once we get more of this under our belt, like where we've been putting up the votes and we've been getting, we the counselors have been getting things three days ahead, then we'll be able to reevaluate and say, okay, we got that structure in place. Now can we add another level to it of the public being able to see some form of draft minutes sooner? And I think that, but if without this, we like we need to build this first and then continually ask ourselves what we can do to do better. So we're coming back to that someday. <laughs> it's not gone away. So we're up to, we're moving on? 3.8, 3.9. The first Margaret is 3.8, and I know we had a lot of comments on this on a, this seems like adding, you can read them out, Mandy, but I saw it was like we're adding yet another way for the public to participate. It's already difficult to figure out what the difference between a hearing, a forum, a whatever is, so, and yeah. do we need to do this at all was one of the questions. Yeah, that, that was one of the first ones was for public dialogue. Don't make a third type event, incorporate aspects of public dialogue into hearings and forums. Public is confused enough. Um, 3.9, and I'm just going to take them all together. Yeah. 3.9, I think this is a really interesting idea that could be useful, but I'm not sure why we need a whole new category of meeting to accomplish this. Could this not be a special meeting of the council? It feels somewhat similar to special meetings that are being called for finance and CRC throughout the month of May. Um, there is um, 5.3, which is the corollary to the 3.8 public dialogue. This is a cool idea, but I'm not clear on how this adds any function utility that is not already covered by a public hearing forum or district meeting. Could this be duplicative of existing meeting formats? And if so, is it necessary? Um, someone else said, I urge that we not adopt proposed rules 3.8 and 3.9 at this time. The requirements in the charter for public hearings, public forums, and district meetings are difficult to manage. Some counselors are experimenting with office hours. We can't yet assess the value of these public engagement efforts. It is too early in the council government to add more expectations. Um, and proposed rule 5.3, that's the public dialogue, is another creation of a public engagement mechanism in addition to what the charter requires for the reasons stated above related to proposed rules 3.8 and 3.9. I urge that the council not adopt this one. And just so if those of us who are looking at the track change, Margaret didn't delete public dialogue but softened it to... Uh, by majority of wrote, we might do one of these whenever we feel like it. Right. Um, so uh, my thought on this um, was, well, let me go to work sessions first. I think maybe at the May 20th meeting, um, we might spend a bit longer describing what these could be, and they're completely discretionary to us, that the notion is very different than a public forum or a public yes. hearing. It's really where 
talking through a tough or complicated issue well before we're doing a vote, and we want others to sit at the table with us that we need there. And that might be, you know, I'm thinking some town staff there, there might be some people from the university, from the community that we know have a lot of knowledge about this, and we're setting it up as a real, what I call a work session, you know, a gaining information, a study section, any name we wanted. So it's different than the others, and from those comments, it w to me it was clear we, we hadn't accented the difference uh, enough. You know, so, so that's all I was thinking on that one, that this is a useful thing for us to have in our um, bag of potential. The public dialogue as we've written it has to happen. So I personally would be fine softening it. And that's a chat with the public, a conversation with them, you know, without as much of a scripted, a scripted dialogue. Um, so, the district, and I'll stop after one more, five seconds. The district meeting we just had in District 1 was pretty close to a public dialogue. Ma Mandy came, you know, people were bringing up issues of concern to them, and each person was giving each other ideas about how to go forward, so it wasn't formal. I like the idea of softening the public dialogue per Margaret's recommendations to at our discretion instead of forcing the two times a year now and then that will give us some leeway given that we're only in our first year of operation. Um, I'm hesitant to remove them completely despite it sounds like many counselors who don't like the idea of them being in here because I think if we remove them we forget about them. Was that two or three counselors? Three separate counselors made okay. those comments I read. Okay. So they're outnumbered. <laughs> wow, Darcy, way to count votes. Um, is that, but, but I, I do think that Kathy's point was extremely well taken, which is that because we were explaining so many things, it was supremely obvious to us what the value of a work session was, but because there just felt like there were so many new things to the rest of the counselors, they couldn't, they, they couldn't perceive that difference. And so when we do public dialogue, right, which, which is more like a forum and more like a district meeting, whereas work session is really a very different thing. Public dialogue is more like those things, but I've argued to individual counselors that it's different because it's not based on your district, and it's different because it's not based on, say, the master plan or the budget. And so it is a different way of having a town-wide discussion about pi public dialogue. But you know, given the, all the interest that was expressed here at this committee, I think it's fine. I do think it's important to leave it in as another kind of thing we could do. But then the may is it doesn't force it if we're not ready to do it this year. But we're reminded that oh yeah, we might do it this way rather than expecting different people to go to different district meetings. So I think, in as long as we ju we just update right 5.3 to also say May, then we'd be fine with public dialogue with the softening but not losing. And I'm desperate to not lose the work sessions because of all the reasons Kathy just stated. And I want to make sure we're all clear. Mm -hmm. I don't know why Margaret would have added in accordance with open meeting law because that is a meaningless concept. Um, what we were trying to say is that the work sessions were not just for counselors that we understand it would have to be a posted meeting, minutes would have to be taken, et cetera. But we were also, so we didn't even address open meeting law because we said they were open to the public with an opportunity to, because we want to make it clear, it's not just a bunch of counselors sitting around deciding this work session with a university official or a town official. It's that the public is open to come to them and they would be posted meetings. So I don't know why we would have to say in accordance with open meeting law, except maybe she was thinking like district meetings aren't open meeting law? Yeah, I, I think it was just to clarify that this is more formal than say a district meeting in terms of requirements for minutes and stuff. So um, in the interest of keeping going, I've changed 3.8 to the council may 
by majority vote, schedule public dialogue sessions as it deems prudent, period, C, rule, blah, blah, that we will then fix. Oh, you did the prudent thing? Uh, it, should I leave? <laughs> Be just, just as it I, deems can, necessary. Can I just or get as rid necessary. Of How about necessary? <laughs> or not even as deems like sessions prudent? as necessary. <laughs> so proper. <Shalini> likes prudent. <laughs> so proper. Um, I would just shorten it. I just moved her whole sentence. The sentence may, by majority vote, schedule public dialogue sessions, period. Oh, wait. Did you say by majority vote? Yes. That's new, and that in 3.8. It's new to 3.8. Yeah. So, so, but it's, so which one, how are we altering them to go together? So 5.3 so and 3.8 We could just say 3.8 is the council may schedule public dialogue sessions, period. Sure, okay. And then See, we at 5.3, we modify that similarly and that's a majority vote or something I, i'm not at 5.3 yet so i can't see what the wording is but okay. we fix it when we get there All okay right. so, we'll so that's to come nice back and to short that. and then work sessions her she had the second edit we were talking about should i just delete it in accordance with my open meeting law you do a reject i liked the addition to just make it clear that it's not that it's not so informal that it's a gathering. district meeting. Okay. Yeah. As okay. long as it means to everybody posting and minutes, then I'm fine with that meaning. Okay. That. Then and we then she changed purpose of a work session is to discuss. And then in which case we have a double work sessions. Oh, so that last sentence needs to then say a work session. You know what I mean? It goes back and forth between work sessions and a work session. Whatever. She actually didn't edit it right. It, she put, if she puts is, and I have to say the purpose of a. Uh, <laughs> Thank <me."> you. <laughs> I know, it's like grammar, grammar. We need to fix that. But where, whether they're singular session or. OK, can, I, I just want to keep us moving, because yeah. I think Good. we're in agreement. We like this, and we're keeping it. And I, so, I'm leaving we'll Margaret's to two edits. In. So as not to skip five. around. Okay, so then we're moving to preparation of agenda, and I don't have any idea why she added in consultation with the clerk of the council because I, that makes me nervous that the president's ability to prepare the agenda should not be limited by the clerk's schedule. So I don't know why you would say in consultation. It's not in the charter. It specifically isn't in the charter. It says advice from counselors and the town manager, period. I don't see any reason to have it added. Yeah, so, I don't get it. Uh, do we have agreement just that I, I don't accept? I'm okay with that. Skip. Good. And I marked under 4.2 how we already made clear that the, that the, in our first sentence there, that the presiding officer can shift things around. And yeah, so I think the question there was, do you call out the president specifically or just say presiding officer? Um, uh, I think you might want to call the president out because the president is the agenda setter and they could set an agenda in a posting that is not the right order but might not be the presiding officer at the meeting but there's probably still involved with the agenda setting for that meeting if they're not going to be at the meeting. So since the president has the specific agenda setting authority, you're then, by keeping them both in, you're allowing when the president publishes the agenda, even if they're not going to preside at the meeting, it to be off kilter. And then whoever's presiding at the meeting can also switch it around if that's not the president. Just catch me up to exactly where we are. 4.2 4. 4. 4. 2. Okay. in that sentence because we talked about should we use president or presiding officer or should we just use presiding officer that this is a case where we should have both I believe Manny just yeah. said yeah, yeah I think so and actually yeah. we have always had that because there's no track changes and in that one. Okay. <laughs> then we're down to 4.3 which has a couple of comments um, I think we should put president or presiding officer ah. into that mm -hmm. too because it is both in agenda setting, but also potentially during the meeting. And I disagree with Margaret's comment to change it to May because I thought we were very specific here that we wanted it to be shall. So we have a couple of comments from counselors, and I will read them. Proposed Rule 4.3 requires public comments on matters that are new to the council and likely new to most members of the public. A better approach would be, quote, when there is significant public interest on an issue before the council as evident from public attendance or otherwise, and when time permits, the president shall include additional public comment sessions specific to the issue, end quote. That was one comment. 
Um, another one is, I think this suggestion has been working very well and would recommend retaining it. Those are the two. So I would say that we keep it as we wrote it because only one person had a problem with it. And we've actually had um, Lynn is in the back room, but we haven't had that many. And it's at the beginning, she's always been able to figure out who's here to talk about these yes. issues. Yeah. yeah, so I think it's working well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want if there's some weird rule that like you're telling by how many people just, yeah, I like the way it says. Okay, 4.4, Margaret has a full delete of everything to describe an executive session. So I wrote Margaret a note separately that said, we so appreciate everything you did, but one of the things is, because you didn't sit through hours of meetings, is you don't know why we did some of the things we did. And one of the things that we did, for example, with executive session, is we were trying to not repeat what's in the law, but yet give the public a sense of, what are they doing? Like, how can they go into executive session? So she gutted it, which in my opinion would mean you don't need to mention it at all because you'd just go to MGL. So I'd like to keep it the way it was. Uh, I wanted to keep it too, so can I just reject her yeah. edits? Yeah. I think that we were good on that. <laughs> I have to tell you, I think there's one edit you might not, the statutory reference she added section A in. I don't okay, know whether so we want that to keep that one or not. Two one in paren little a that yeah. would be okay. I don't know, Somehow. Alyssa. I th yeah. yeah, I think that one's fine it's to keep. It doesn't hurt anything because yeah, then it actually has the reference. It's much easier to reject an edit than de-edit the edits in terms of the way it looks. I have to tell you. Her change of shall instead of may. In the executive sessions versus the gutting? Um. Oh, she was, but that changes the shall be convened. It was what it was read to. So instead of may be convened. Uh, I like I mean, may, I think. Yeah. Personally. The only thing I like about what she added here, because for the reasons we stated, is the actual MGL reference, which maybe we just put at the end of the 4.4 heading rather than having have its own sentence, but however we just, whatever looks good to you, Kathy. I think it looks fine. I'm just trying to, where the executive sessions may be entered only into, did she make, uh, uh, where was the may and the shall that you were talking out? She had two. Because um, I, I just rejected her so change. So she, she had, her, her sentence would have read, executive sessions shall be convened in accordance with MGL 30A, chap, section 21B, for the reasons stated in MGL 30A, section 21A. Um, we had executive sessions may be entered only after the council, blah, 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 blah. And then we had executive sessions may only be convened for reasons stated in blah, blah, blah. So where would you put the shall? So I think the may in the first paragraph is good, but maybe the shall executive session shall yes. only be convened okay. for reasons stated. So in that, that, that may that should one. turn into a... Uh, yeah. Shall. The first may is... Is fine, good. but I think the, the second, second one may. should be a shall. shall. Got it. Okay. <laughs> we love our maze and shells. Yeah. 4.5 was just a computation of time from Margaret. Um, we had a comment that said we haven't been following this. I think this is a great rule as I often fear if I read the packet too early then I will miss things, but can we abide by it? <laughs> so this is, goes back to the posting. Um, and 4.5 may have an unintended consequence. If a committee meets three to seven days before a meeting, it may be impossible for the committee chair to prepare a report three days prior to the meetings. It is complicated by the general statutory rule that weekends are not included when actions are required within 10 days or fewer. This requirement rate may reduce the number of written reports and increase the reliance on oral reports. I think it's this goes harder. back to the enforcement question, doesn't it? Yeah, it's harder for committees that meet on Wednesdays, on Thursdays, or Wednesdays, I guess. 
Impossible for Thursdays. It's impossible for Thursdays, <laughs> yeah. I guess I saw it as aspirational, right? This is, this is our general standard. If you can meet it, great. If you can't meet it, what's going to happen to you? I mean, nothing. Somebody's going to complain if a particular committee's not maybe fulfilling their obligation to report back more effectively, right? Like, how come they always give a verbal report? You know, that, that could be a question. But I think setting an idea is not saying, well, now that we have this rule, everyone has to twist themselves into a pretzel. I mean, it's, it's generally what we expect. We understand, particularly as we're all meeting less often, honestly, a lot of our committees, once we get into a groove, aren't going to be facing quite as much time pressure. So I think I'm hearing we leave it as is, and the question of what do we mean by days will be taken care of by our how you compute a day. And there's a little bit of slack here yeah. when it's late breaking news. Yeah, as in couldn't, but it, I do think the expectation that a committee has met, um, I find it really difficult to get things sent to me by email Monday morning. Because yes. I actually don't know they're, I don't always know they're there. I mean, I may be doing something else, and so I'm supposed to have read something I didn't know I had, um, which makes it extremely difficult. <laughs> And sometimes it is or isn't in the packet in a way that I know it just got added. You know, it, it, it's just, um, you know, so I like the idea of it being a tough rule unless we, you know, so I'd almost postpone something if it can't get to me before, uh, and worst is getting it three or four o'clock in the afternoon before Monday. You know, I mean, it just shouldn't come in that late. It, Can I just, um, this may not be the right, forum for this, but all of these points are leading to the idea we need somebody else to be working on the minutes for all of us and posting them and doing all of these things. So there's a clear need for that. The, the other aspect to this that I think we need to not lose sight of is that Arguably, any committee report is an expression of opinion and should not be being provided outside of a posted meeting and until we have it set up so that the public is getting it 48 hours ahead, it's actually, arguably, by some people in Division of Open Government, not supposed to be submitted prior to the meeting at which it's considered, which is, of course, ridiculous because how are you going to take time to read a report? So. Our, our lives are complicated by that issue, but okay. technically, yeah. Okay, so we're moving on because yeah, we, let's just we, we're, go past it. We're so far at the we're good minor edit world. So five point one, um, I saw in B two changes that we want to probably change president to presiding officer in five point one B. I see. Both references should probably more properly be presiding officer. Um, and the comment there, so D, I'm not sure we need the president in there versus just presiding officer. Yeah. Given that we're trying to consistently use presiding officer, we can remove president. Yeah. In place, presiding officer in place of. Instead right, of and, an and presiding person. officer Margaret added. Um, so we just want to take out president. President. Without first being okay, recognized so by I mean the presiding one, officer. 5.1B, I change president to presiding officer. So then the next one down is D? D. Okay, yeah. D And B two. had two changes, two places. Yeah, I yeah. did two okay. presiding officers there. And D. And then D, the number two has a one. Okay. Got now, it. The D, just at the very beginning, where yep. Margaret's changes are. Just, just do president. I mean, get rid of president. President there, and then right. I guess yeah, D two. Right, got it. Has one. Um, there was a a comment on five one e. Council's response to public comment: the president's recognition of counselor or staff to answer questions of public very important, more important than the ten p.m. closing time. Um, and five point one D five. I support D5, which is written comments submitted. 
if this, I wonder if this should also be expanded to include written comments sent prior to the meeting and to specify that written comments are never included in the packet. And then, is there another one? We're on 5.1E. The comment is confusing as written because of the placement of the reference to the open meeting law. It would be clearer to say, quote, the intention of the public comment period is for council to hear comments on matters that are not on the agenda, not to engage in discussion of those issues. The open meeting law may not be a barrier to discussion because these matters were not anticipated by the president 48 hours in advance. We're mixing a whole lot of different things together. Right. So let's go back to D5, right? We fixed yes. D. D5 as to whether or not we want to add anything about those other comments. And while I respect that concept, I think it's going to make it more confusing if we try and address that issue of people emailing us stuff and saying, put this in your packet and put this in the record. I'm not sure that's easily addressed except through a completely different I, rule. I just heard the person, no, I you heard the- You want to read it a, a different way? No, I heard the, the comment being, this says a written comment during the meeting would be sent to us. Yeah. I think the comment was just suggesting written comments prior or during the meeting. Weren't you putting the word prior, just making sure that if something came in to us that we got it. Was that what the comment? The, so I'll the, read the comment again. I support this. I wonder if this should be should also be expanded to include written comments sent prior to the meeting and to specify that written comments are never included in the packet. So I'm not sure what expansion would be if written comments prior to a meeting aren't included in the packet. Are we just handed a whole bunch and the clerk's got to figure out what we received? I'm, I'm just not sure where this comment's going. If, if for the I, I, written I, I, comments I received I, I read, prior to I read a meeting. this as, as um, you know, when someone emails us and it comes to, Lynn is forwarding them or we all get them, but suppose a letter comes in that we should somehow know that um, I'm sending you my views on this. We should know it. They didn't have to hand it to us during the meeting. So I was thinking that we don't have the word prior, you know, that if there's a written comment, on something, we could get it prior to or during. And then the person who's giving in this, but they don't want it in the packet. You know, they just want us to know what's been coming in. So they were trying to make it clear we weren't gonna be posting it. Um, so this is all talking about things happening at a meeting, and this was mainly to address the idea of somebody come in with 13 letters and walking around and handing them all to right, us. Right, exactly. As opposed to what you said, which is really important that we get the information ahead of meetings that's provided to us ahead of meetings. Right, if, which is a if it wasn't already concept. sent to all of us naturally, right? To me that's a different, and so if we wanna, we could add something, but I'd be uncomfortable with saying or prior within that same sentence because this is talking about actions happening okay. Okay. during the meeting. But maybe, I mean, maybe we do need to add that someplace. So am I, should I change anything or should we, the actual practice has been to get us those comments? Um, so I think if something's been sent by mail to an address to the town council, we've been receiving copies in our maroon folders before yeah, that's meetings. What, that's why I think we, um, by practice, it's been happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not sure we need to specify. Okay. Whereas we were calling this out to make it clear. You just hand all the stuff to the clerk, and she'll take care of it, and she'll make sure we all get it. She won't just put You're it in the hole. You're not walking to each individual counselor and right. just handing something to them. Yeah. Could we back up just a moment, though, because. Four, I'm, I object to Margaret's change on identifying by name and address. Uh, we have never required that in anything other than maybe some kinds of public hearings, and I just think that's not necessary. Where is that? So I D4. D4, she added, by identify themselves by name and address. That oh, just feels we very do a uncomfortable reject. to me. Oh, do a reject. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that, I that's good. The address made sense if it's in a written, in, in the register of people's but not when you're actually making your comment. Right, you shouldn't um, have to say. And that's probably upon recognition by the presiding officer. Oh, there's another one. There's yeah. another one. There's a lot of them. We'll just find them all. Who's there's one in E1. Yeah, you're right, there is, isn't there?
And then, yeah, when we're in E, I, I actually don't have share the same understanding Margaret does about council practice because we have, in fact, turned to the town manager for a question at some point, and practice, of course, is a very limited number of months old. Um, I liked what we wrote, but is there a way to elaborate on it for the counselor comment that we got associated with that to make it clear that in theory, something somebody's bringing up could be an item unanticipated, so we don't want to seem like we're shutting the door. The counselor comment actually added some stuff. The counselor comment had proposed the intention of the public comment period is for the council to hear comments on matters that are not on the agenda, not to engage in discussion of those issues, um, which actually isn't something we've done for public comment. Because we have different kinds of public comment. And, and you, we can't restrict that you can't talk about what's on the agenda at all. You know, you're allowed to. It's just sometimes we're saying you're going to do it when we hit that item. Other times we're saying you can do it at the general comment. So, but not to engage in discussion of those issues. Um, so the, and then it said the open meeting law may not be a barrier to discussion because these matters were not anticipated by the president if they're not on the agenda. Um, so I guess the concern was the in compliance with open meeting law phrasing. I don't think we have a problem here. Just delete the in compliance with open yeah. meeting law yeah, phrasing. So I, I, we I, had done it. We, we struggled with that phrase the yeah, last time. It doesn't of, seem like we have to have those words. Right? Yeah. We could just take that out. Right. Because right. then we don't provide that barrier that counselor's concerned about, but we also don't automatically open it up to something. Yeah. It remains at the presiding officer's discretion and just okay. not addressing it is perhaps it. best. Right. I think, yeah, I think that solves it as much as it's going to get solved. Because it doesn't make it a three-line three rule anymore. <laughs> it's rid of one line. Okay, public hearings. Here's the comments. Public hearings are required for many reasons, some required by state law and others by charter. There is not always a petition or a petitioner, such as a hearing to set the tax rate. When the Finance Committee schedules a budget hearing is required by the charter, there is no petitioner. This proposed rule needs to be reconsidered. Um, the public hearings, 5.2? 5.2, is it C that they're concerned uh, That one was I'm just 5.2 in general. My guess is it's the after petitioner's presentation. So there's another one that says, I don't know if, if and this is specifically for C, I don't know if this is the typical order for public hearing, but it seems like questions from counselors should come first or second so that all questions are answered before any testimony is given. Um, so I think that was taken care of with Margaret's recommended change of adding a questions from counselors and then comments from counselors at the end. And that's it for the public hearing section comments. So maybe instead of after petitioner's presentation, the public hearing format is one petitioner's presentation, if any, two questions from counselors, three public asking questions, four, you know, or just presentation. I'm sorry, so maybe do we just, in, where it says after petitioner's presentation, maybe turn that into one of the steps in, instead of that parenthesis, is we have that be first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of the parentheses, number one is petitioner's presentation, number two, two. is questions from counselors, then public, then ah. public speaking in favor, public opposing, then comments from counselors, and then you're closing the hearing. Although comments from counselors isn't part of the hearing, comments from counselors. from counselors again, actually, because part of what Oh, we're yeah, you to can have multiple questions. It's yeah. two different question periods, is actually, because comments will take place during. After the hearing is closed. Right, after the giving speech part yeah. is closed. But, but we should be able to ask, so whether we want to say questions or comments or just questions, but we need under what's currently listed as five, which will be six, I guess, will be. And it's another question period because we we may have more questions. Some the public may have brought something up that we then turn to Dave, the president, and say, "Could Mr. Zomack address that more?" Because we don't understand what the public just said versus what he just said. 
So. And, and the whole about non-petitioners, we did have in E, the format doesn't apply to public hearings to consider the budget, the master plan. Yep. Um, hearings where procedures are governed by state law or hearings on topics where the, where the council is not responding to a formal petition. So I think we've already sort of done some of that hedging there, mm -hmm. that the format's not for formal petition, essentially anything formal. So I think we've hedged enough there. So what that, after that, public speaking and opposition, should that be Okay, questions? I'm just telling you, I'm following it, but I haven't typed anything yet because so I, I would like to do it all at once. In C, I think what it is is in C, public hearing format colon, and then number one is now petitioner's presentation. Margaret's added one is now two. Everything else got bumped numbers. And we are rejecting her change in the new six from questions from counselors to comments from counselors going back to questions from counselors because comments are part of D, the council debate. Okay, so it's public hearing format colon. Number one is petitioner's presentation. Then questions from counselors. Mm -hmm. Then just tell me what comes next. Public asking question. Public, public speaking, speaking in, in favor. favor public, public speaking in opposition. And then questions from counselors. Again. And, and again. then questions again. Okay. And then there can be a motion to close the evidentiary portion, and that's when we have the comments, so to speak, because that's part of our deliberation. Got it. <laughs> Moving to public dialogue. We're yes. back to five point three, like we said. We okay. Would. So then we'll. Um, what I'm thinking would be the simplest would be by majority vote, comma, the council may hold public dialogue sessions. Yep. So way, okay. Sounds good to me. That way it's a more inclusive, do we need to do this? Okay. Yeah, that works. So that first part where it says at least two times a year, instead it says by majority oh, vote, yeah. comma, at least two times a no. year, or no. We're we're no at least two times, two times a, year. a year. Okay, so by majority vote, the council may hold. Okay. By majority vote. May hold. May hold public dialogue sessions, a public dialogue session. That That's, so it now reads the, by majority vote, the council may hold public dialogue sessions, period. Or or maybe I'll say a hold a so I can don't have to edit the second sentence. Right. May hold a public dialogue yes. session. Then it says this session may occur. So everything else stays exactly as we wrote it. Yeah. Right. It no longer requires it and it's a majority vote, so it's like everybody agreed we should do this thing. Cool. The only other comments that the PDF had for Rule 5 was Rules 5 and 6, 5.5 and 5.6, and probably would go on reading the comment to 5.7 too, um, which is given that these are already discussed in the Charter, is it necessary to repeat them in the rules? So that goes back to sort of a general, how much do we want to repeat from the charter for explanation and not having to jump back and Which forth? Which one was that, Manny? I'm confused. 5.5, 5.6, .5, district meetings and free petition. Ah, uh, right. So we, did we just jump through Margaret's edits of 5.4? We, we didn't. Sorry. We didn't. <laughs> no, that, that's she okay. She's excited. She ignored it. <laughs> All right. No, I'm, I'm willing to jump forward. I just need to be told to so, jump forward. So let's go ahead and jump forward for a minute because you were because that's where we got comments. Okay. We no, I'm, comments I'm fine jumping. There. So we're on 5.5 five and 5.6, five, but we're going to go back to 5.4. But the okay. district meeting stuff is just... Is it a more user-friendly version in all reality, or is it just repetitious, and do we feel the need to have it in there? It, it, w it was put in after the fact um, because we had a, a whole thing called public participation. And, yes. And when yes. we had this discussion early on, it was 
harking back to our opening right. statement about our values, where we believed in robust public. Right. So we wanted to show, if anyone should ever read our rules, they don't have to go read the charter, that right. to the extent we can, we've got a lot of opportunities. So it, it, deliber it deliberately it. Yes. repeated. Um, exactly. To say this is not; these are not the only ones. You know, the new things we're putting in. There's a bunch right. of other times. Don't forget about all these other. So cool So I think you that have. would be a good explanation to whichever the counselors put that in. Don't repeat that. Yeah. This this is again. Uh, this is who we are as the as the Amherst Town Council. Yep. So I would want to keep it just as is. All the avenues. Yes. Yes, I like it. So we're leaving it all. Yeah. Leaving as is. Yeah, because we want we want to show all the options, plus the new options we made. Right. Right. So now we have to go back. Five point four. To five point four. So I didn't have a problem with her edits. I think she, you know, it cuts out what the forums are for, but I think that's okay it actually might give us a little more leeway when holding a forum on, say, the master plan if we haven't defined it somewhere as to exactly what you're supposed to do there. Um, and same with the capital improvement forum. Um, so I didn't really have a, I'd be okay with accepting all of her changes. Whereas I run the exact opposite way and said, quite harshly in my note to myself, there is zero point in not describing the forums. If you're going to just use the headers in the charter, then you can skip all of it because it doesn't. there's no point to it. The rules aren't supposed to be a repeat of the charter. In this case, unlike, for example, district meetings and free petition, which we wanted to make sure people knew those things existed without having to go and read the charter in the various places that they can find them, is that I thought this really was an opportunity for us to be able to help engage ourselves and the public as to what would we do at budget public forum, what would we do at capital improvement forum, and what would we do at master plan forum. So, so Alyssa, you're just to do I it, like quick, do it just quickly. You're saying keep the description of each of these in. Do you like the rest of her edits? I mean, I, I found the rest of the edits simplifying and clarifying, but so is it mainly the objection to getting rid of the description of these it's three? Mainly does, yes, and the only other one I had was associated with her edits, so that to me was the substantive one, and the only other one is I thought it might be a little clearer when she's trying to describe our bizarro one half of the time scenario, which I appreciate the crack at that, is maybe it's calculated instead of saying, just as the formal presentation, maybe it would help to say as the initial formal presentation, mm -hmm. because it's like what happens at the beginning is what counts, as opposed to the follow-up part. So I thought maybe adding the word initial would be a little bit helpful between the and formal in that last sentence on page 11. I, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I, the only thing I wondered was she starts with one half, you know, the, the way public forum or forum is defined in the charter um, has that um, one half of the time must be devoted to public comment. Right, and that's um, still, And yeah. she starts with one half of the time is calculated as formal presentation, you know, whereas, you know, it, it's almost swaps. Yeah. Where the one half is public forum, the phrase public forum shall mean a meeting during which more than one half of the meeting time on the agenda is devoted to public comment. Yeah, so did, maybe it um, we could just say um, a, a, some other rewording that's like comments or responses to question or responses to questions by responses to comments or questions from the public shall be considered time devoted to public comment. So for purposes so, of so calculation get, so or get something. Rid of, get rid of the first sentence get, and then and then sort of say for purpose purposes of calculating time, comma responses to questions, responses by the town officials to questions or comments made by the public shall be considered public comment. So, 
So it says, for purposes of calculating time, responses, re responses to questions by the town manager, staff, or counselor shall be considered uh, part of the public comment time? or Because they're not public comment. No, so responses by town staff or town officials, I don't know, by the town manager, staff, or counselors to questions and comments made by the public. Her, the, her wording was kind of confusing anyway. So it's the responses by us to questions or comments made by the public shall be considered part of the time devoted to public comment. I don't know whether that's clear or not. I'm editing the edit. So, for purposes of calculating time, comma, responses by the town manager, staff, or counselors to questions or comments made by the public shall be considered part of the time devoted to public comment. That I think is, that works. Yep. Yeah. And then as I go down, um, the next one I think is, Claire makes it simpler, no fewer than one public forum on, for each of the following, and then we're rejecting the edits that get rid of the definitions of these. And do I keep the last, in addition to specific forums, the council shall hold forums in accordance with blah, 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 blah. She got rid of all of that. Why did she get rid of all of that? Charter, what? She just referred to the charter instead of describing what those sections say. I would just say. keep those words. I mean, I, I would re reject all those edits because it, it's not confusing. Um, I'm fine with rejecting those edits. Okay. To our delightful Rule 6, Code of Courtesy, Conduct, and Debate. Yeah. Do you want to talk about what's in the um, counselor comments first, Mandy? Jones? So I will try. Um, six, there's a couple, and I apologize for jumping around because they jump around. 6.4, we need a parliamentarian who is not a council member, appoint one from the public. 6.2D um, is sufficient. I do not like silencing the public, smacks a dictatorship. They have a right to express their opinion. Um, someone else, regarding the applause rule, it's against our value of celebrating our achievements. I feel we can accommodate the main concern. Don't want to support audible, visible expressions that create divisiveness by adding wording that makes that point clear. Those present shall not engage in audible demonstration of approval or disapproval if it creates divisiveness or something like that. That would allow us to clap for collective victories in our children like we did at the end of the guy Steve acknowledged. Um, 6.1. In the statement, participants should avoid, I would encourage a stronger word than should. Uh, 6.2, should I stop? The, I've got two, three, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the rest. 6.2, I strongly prefer option two. Um, when contentious issues arise, audible demonstrations of approval or disapproval can alter the entire atmosphere of the room. Consider a situation where a member of the public offers public comment against a particular policy and the room erupts in applause at the end of the comment. This may now discourage or make uncomfortable a member of the public who is present to speak in favor of a particular policy. Cheering or applause is not just about celebration, it can also signal agreement and that has the potential to change the character of debate. I do not believe 6.2D is sufficient as in the example above people clapping at the end of a public comment would not quote disturb or impede the orderly procedure of the meeting, but certainly would change the atmosphere of the room which can stifle debate. 6.3K, um, 
I think we have become accustomed to this rule, but it should be reconsidered. I know everyone likes a casual environment, but we are elected officials engaged in serious deliberation, and our address to each other should reflect that. Further, in talking with Senator Rose Rosenberg about this issue, he mentioned that during contentious de policy debates, the use of first names can make things feel very personal, whereas using counselor name, quote, counselor, and then the counselor's name, shows respect even in the face of disagreement. He encouraged using titles as it can help preserve decorum during debate. And in 6.4, is this a majority vote? Does that need to be specified? So that's, I think that was the thing we actually might have just deleted. Um, and that is all the comments on rule six. So in 6.4, to make our lives simple, in 6.4, we already deleted that, right? Where we took out the yes. part yes. about that. It's so gone. now we don't really need to specify because it's just go look elsewhere to how this is gonna work. Right. And then, and then the presiding officer thing. Is, um, and, and here, am I, in general, so you don't know, how, everyone should alert me to it, but instead of the president or presiding officer, should we just switch to presiding officer? 6.4. 6.4. Um, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I'm not sure what know, to do I'm, with that one because, because the preserving decorum and order is the presiding officer. Right. Right. But then there's that sentence, the president may speak in favor or opposition to any motion, may participate and vote under the same rules as applied to other counselors. Okay, the, that president that, that one I think needs yeah. to be It's just the very first the president, one, the president or, and paren or parat. Do we leave it that That's the way I edited it last I time. I think you could just say the president or presiding officer shall preserve decorum okay. without the parentheses maybe. Okay. Um, and then it's clear that the, the next kept paragraph about the may speak in favor is literally just about the president. Right. Now we can go back up to the other. Yes, that we were taking the easy one because it was near the end. Okay, I, so I was now just doing the last one six. because we dismissed 6.4 now, so now we can go up. So 6.1 is presiding officer and president again in the, in the first paragraph. Um, address their remarks to the presiding officer. Right, that, yeah. so that's one where we change it, yeah. I've good. changed it. Excellent. And then there's the C, um, uh, 6.2A, where it's C rule five versus just rule five. 6.1, someone said in the statement, participants should avoid yes. encourage stronger than should. I'm trying to figure out where this is. Where they is. meant that. Oh, so, so we've got um, in the, the very first sentence. Oh, the maybe? second sentence. Participants should avoid discussing Discuss personalities, personalities. Not in, and not impugn. So we could say participants shall avoid. Ooh. That's and, and then later on, you've got all participants should address their remarks to the presiding officer. You should probably say all participants shall address yeah. their remarks to get rid of those two shoulds to shalls. Yeah, we, we usually use may or shall, not should, yeah. as this has evolved over time. Mm -hmm. if that takes care of all the comments in 6.1, I think. And in 6.2a is where I just wondered if we were adding, at the end of the reference to rule five, if we were adding the word C or not adding the word C there, I don't know. Remember what our result was there. I mean, we could. I. It's there. I don't think it. You know what? I think we could take it out altogether. You think don't even mention Rule Five? Yeah. Oh, that's fine. What? That's fine. Because yeah, I mean, we have an entire section called public participation. <laughs> if, in, and so, rather than pointing them to it, just assume that they know it exists. Yeah. Because this rule six comes after rule It is five. a whole rule. <laughs> it's an entire rule. Yeah. Go, right. Why would you skip to six and not read five first? I, I could see that. I mean, in other cases, we are moving. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fine either way because I don't find a cross reference, you know, because we've got several places in five, so we can't even say here. Yeah. There's. I, I'm fine because I don't think this is. Why don't is we very, just delete it? Okay. 
So then we've I just got think we wanted to make, I think one of the reasons it came into there is so that we made it super clear, like we did in some other places, super clear. There's a whole rule about this. Like, so, we're not just giving you one sentence. So the on the next one down on B, Margaret's comment is interesting because I hadn't thought that we can't necessarily restrict it to, if someone comes in, I've got three things I want to talk about, we'd hear about three things as long as they can get it done in three minutes, yes? Yeah, I guess I looked at that one as saying you should have, you shouldn't ramble randomly about you should talk about Duh. something. You should have a point. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. Like, that's how I read focus on specific <laughs> issues. You should have a point. <laughs> but so, so you don't think the concern she raises, you know, because I didn't think of it, this was restrictive either. I mean, I thought, you yeah, know. Yeah, I don't think it actually. Okay, so we can take her. I'll just delete her comment. Yeah. Okay. What is her comment? Her comment is worried that we can't, stop people from saying what they want to say um, and you know so is it enforceable and it this is more saying you know we're hoping the public coming is talking about a specific issue so we're not really you've got three minutes so you could use it again you know would someone get up and talk about my child visited me yesterday and we had a really good time you know I mean that would be an example where they're not bringing up an issue to the council you know? We, maybe we could say, instead of specific issues, shall, shall pertain to matters under the jurisdiction of the council. Ooh. Yeah. That's way better. Why not? I like that. that. I, think, I think we did that back in public participation in Rule 5 somewhere. I think we had yeah. similar language in Rule 5. And, and what is the president supposed to do? They don't. So that's they what she, she's raising the enforcement side. What, why? why we had a situation like that, by the way, very recently. Right. And so that gives you the opportunity to say, please focus on issues that pertain to the thing. But I mean, you can't unwind it. It's not like you're in a courtroom where you can say, just regard what that person just said. So, I mean, the best you can do is say, is that kind of constant care and feeding of public comment, please focus on issues, and then we're always gonna have people who break the rules, and then talk about their grandchildren visiting. So, you know, I mean, it's just gonna happen. So instead of the legal shall pertain, can I say shall focus on issues under the jurisdiction of the council or something like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. There are issues that people come of the town. Technically, therefore, they're under our jurisdiction. So I just want to, somebody may come to, you know, complain about something a department did. Technically, that is part of our duty, but people may not see it that way. It, but I, I personally think that what we have written here, rather than editing it down, um, you know, if someone wanted us to make a statement about nuclear power, you know, and some of the things, you know, that we don't have any control of, control of, we might be willing to entertain, could you come back with that as a proclamation or something? You know, I mean, we wouldn't restrict them that we can't, <laughs> you know, if they wanted to make a statement, you know, I'm thinking of one that might, uh, would the town council support something that the legislature might do for Medicare for all. I mean, it's not, the town can't do it, we can't do it. You know, so there, you know, people might make these kinds of statements and we wouldn't just want to say that's, we don't want to hear about that, right? So I kind of like public comments to focus on specific issues, not fixing it. I don't have a preference one way or the other, so I'm okay. Yeah, yeah go back to the, leave yeah. it the way it yeah. was. Good point, Kathy. Then we're on to D and is it technically a new E or was it just added? If you look at it as as it would uh, be no a new E of, and F eventually, but I guess it's not quite now because of formatting, right? Um, the demonstrations, yeah. or is it just part of no, D? I, 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 when I did this, word wouldn't let me move it out. I'll figure out how to get it. It's supposed to be D-E-F, okay. yeah. <laughs> and, and I yes. 
Somehow I couldn't get rid of the little arrow. <laughs> and it was in, it's whatever we, uh, whatever blood ends up on the floor at the end of this meeting associated with this particular item, it is within D. And so E so and it's, F it's, are the it's same. A, it's, a sub, it's a sub of each, it should be a little one, right? It should be a one, and I tried to. Oh, is it supposed to be it, a little it, it's one? It's not. Actually. No, I thought it was it's, supposed to be a new E, and E would become so, F. So I'll bring it in, so I'll, let me do it right, right now and see if That I was originally it. what was no. proposed in option. Option one was that D was sufficient. Option two was adding a sentence before D. It wasn't adding a whole nother letter. It was just elaborating. Oh. Okay, because in a prior draft, it was a separate letter. Ah. That's why I'm confused, I the guess. The last one we provided said add a separate sentence before D, which I interpreted as adding a sentence before the word those in D, oh, and someone else okay. might interpret as adding another letter. Letter, okay. So either way, either we could do it either way, but I think Cap Kathy captured here what we talked about then on the yep. 7th, which was something that Shalini had offered, which is something I mentioned earlier I don't agree with, and we've heard the counselor comment that actually expressed what I think better than I did. And, um, and then so. you had a, another co counselor comment that said this feels dictatorial, yes, why are exactly. we suppressing speech? Yes. So we got yep. two extraneous, or three on this, um, some in favor, some not in favor um, of, 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 of of having it at all, but also of softening it a little bit. So Shalini's yeah. added word soften it a little bit. I mean, I keep just, it, I but soften I just want to address the concerns that people had. The two things I heard was one, I mean, the main thing I heard was the divisiveness, like one way or the other, if it's, you know, we don't want people to feel um, awkward about or whatever their decision is. So if you can address that concern, and what is the, is there any other concern that's left out? My comment mm -hmm. associated with that is that if 13 people could agree on what was disruptive or divisive, we'd be fine. But just as some would find it chilling to say anything about this, um, I don't think, I, I think that what the counselor wrote separately was actually really clear in that you would ne you personally, a person on the council, may never consider applause to be divisive, whereas somebody out in the audience who was just totally trounced in what they thought their opinion was may find it very divisive that a whole bunch of people just burst into applause for something that was exactly the opposite of what they wanted. How do you as a counselor decide that particular display of applause? And that's why I was saying earlier, associated with my version of it, is that you know, when we spontaneously applaud third graders, like, awesome, who's gonna do anything to us? Like, I don't see why we wanna prevent ourselves from saying, and we would never, I mean, we, we have a rule. If people spontaneously explode into applause because someone's retired or because someone did an amazing thing or because third graders came before us, I don't think that's the same as an everyday rule that says we don't go through each order of business thinking that maybe somebody will decide to have an expression that's visible or audible about, ooh, look, they voted yes on these appointments. Oh, hiss, they didn't do that on that appointments. Was that divisive or not? I mean, I don't think that having the rule that I asked for prevents us from having something spontaneous happen. That it would be up to the president at that point to say, okay, that's enough clapping, we need to stop after half an hour, but it wouldn't be, oh, stop that. Don't applaud for third graders. Like, you don't have to have that interpretation of the rule. Things happen spontaneously that we might appreciate. I cannot agree to saying that someone decides what's disruptive or divisive in terms of an approval or disapproval, because the, you, no two of us is going to agree, because we're not sitting out in the audience. We don't know. So, uh, go Darcy. Um, I feel like there's. Um, you know, people feel strongly about this, obviously, um, both ways. So I, you know, and I feel like we had a very close vote on the council. Yep. Is there a way that we can just, you know, leave it as one item that we still haven't finally decided and just let the council decide? And just yellow shade it then? And, and then the question is if, if the recommendation is to, to leave it, 
it's with the qualifying words disruptive or divisive, or do we go back to the those present the period after dispro disapproval as it was written? That's I I just I'm I'm fine with leaving it in yellow highlighted to say we want to come back to this. Um, I think the addition clarifies it improves upon our last version, so we should have it with the new words in it. Device. And I'm concerned by putting the words in, but I was going to say this: we have to also remember, in terms of clapping and all, that this is a rule for the public, not a rule for us. Um, so we could applaud the third graders all we want if we right. want. We're not prohibiting from exactly. us from applauding a presentation or something we're saying the public shouldn't do stuff. I'm I'm concerned by this who judges whether it's divisive. That's I mean exactly disruptive is a us. little bit easier to determine, but divisive because you don't know if someone's sitting in an audience whether they've spoken or not and and you go to the counselor that said and and I I will I'll, I'll go back to I think Alyssa used the argument about Indigenous Peoples Day at town meeting when that was up for a vote there were some individuals that spoke passionately for keeping it named Columbus Day as an Italian heritage recognition not necessarily for Columbus and what he did but for Italian heritage in general and it took a lot of courage to get up in town meeting when and say that number one and then when it passed overwhelmingly with only maybe eight people uh, there was a very few against and the room broke out in applause that could be considered very divisive but i'm guessing for those that were applauding they were not believing it was divisive and so divisive is is hard to, it's a much harder thing to determine agreement on as to whether something was divisive. I think anything that could be voted one way or the other is divisive, but anything that involves celebrating a common victory is not divisive. So I don't know if you want to state it differently, but. I guess though a common victory isn't always common and not a unanimous. And so even a unanimous vote on the council doesn't have most likely unanimous support in town. And so in applauding a unanimous vote of the council, yeah, I, so I, I'm just having problems figuring out how right, that would right, be right. interpreted. Right. So I'd just rather get rid of it. Yeah, when I, so anything that involves a vote, I think could be, could have either or and would be dis divisive. So I'm not, when I say a common victory doesn't mean a, vo a common vote. I just mean that like the children coming or someone that Steve pointed out or someone that's, um, um, you know, a retirement or something, you're acknowledging somebody. So that doesn't involve a vote, but it's an acknowledgement. So maybe what we want to say is not use the word divisive, but if, um, is that if there is, but if it's creating such a big controversy, let's not do it. Well, all I ask so is that if you want to leave this to a vote of the council on Monday, that we you place it, give them two or three options, so that they clearly vote versus letting them sit there and try to wordsmith. Okay, because that takes time. So you know the the original clean version was those present shall not engage in demonstration of approval or disapproval. Period, right? The, um, the original was audible. What? The original was actually audible demonstrations of approval or disapproval. And okay. then we had the conversation about finger snapping and hand waving. <laughs> but and the original and signs. said and signs. audible. <laughs> what? Finger snapping, waving, and d display of signs. Signs. So we decided approval. So that would be a way of stating this. The second would be. Uh, remove divisive and say that are disruptive, or I'm just thinking even if we were talking about it, you know, uh, accept to in, to in celebration or appreciation of, you know, I, I mean, I, so it, it, what, what we're, we're hedging around is another it. idea. What about, based on what Shalini just said, approval or disapproval of a council 
action. Right. That's or what of a council vote or a council uh -huh. decision. I mean, that, that as a, as a, a third alternative or some sort of alternative wording if we're going to have wording and I know Alyssa's like there's problems with that but yeah, that you know that. that doesn't say di disruptive or divisive but it's on specific votes there's no applause yes. Yes. so the problem with talking about specific votes it, if that's the only thing you talk about is that now mm -hmm. you have not addressed the fact that when Bill gets up there and says, we need to have Italian American Day by God, then the rest of the population that's sitting out there can go, boo, hiss, whatever, no, don't say that. So it's, it's fine to have one thing that talks about us, but it doesn't relate to that. So I'm literally at the point, at this point, where I'm willing to give up on this, and I am willing to go with, if, let me be clear what I'm giving up. I'm willing to give up my old phrasing of those present shall not engage in audible demonstrations of approval or disapproval, which was based on my 20 years of legislative experience in the town of Amherst. I am willing to give that up if all we say is what we already have about those present conducting, disturbing, or impeding. If we don't say anything about the applause stuff, if we don't say anything about celebrating our community, if we just leave it the frick alone and go with this, and then if it turns out that we're having trouble with that and our president says, you know, I kind of wish I had another rule that I can enforce here, we can figure out a way to phrase it then. I Would accept that, that. I second yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Let it so I, I wrestled Alyssa to the So camera. rather than <laughs> multiple wordsmiths, so we're deleting this, so there'll be an A, B, C, D, E, E. Um, and uh, when we explain this next week, uh, we can always, as Lynn had pointed out, is put it on the, you know, up on the screen, please don't break out and clapping or cheering. Or, you know, so we, we can see what we can do to just send the signal and message in a very informal way rather than a rule. Gone. It's gone. I, I just wanted to, it's ironic that it's the one rule and Margaret said good rule to in her comments <laughs> and now we just deleted it. With, That's with, her years of experience at town meetings speaking. Yeah. Without question, I have to say both Margaret and Paul and I have spoken about the two times we've had applause and I'm not surprised to see their comments. And so I will explain to the people who felt that was important exactly why we got to the point where we got. Mm -hmm. Well, particularly because it was an option, right? That's what makes yeah. it extra complicated, yeah. is if we're trying to show them what you saw on the 6th versus what you see on the 20th. Hey, I've got it as a deleted something. Then the other, um, Mandy, as you went through the larger list, one person. 6.3K, um, which Margaret also had a change to, the addressing of each other, was the next one that people commented on. I, I actually think we should just get rid of K as a rule. Um, that's the way we are acting. Um, and, and I want, I'm turning to Darcy because she said this was such a popular thing that we did that it would be nice to put it in as a rule. But there might be instances, what's being pointed out, there might be instances we need to be more formal in First some way. Thing. Right? You know, in a hearing when we're going up against something where we want to go back to Councillor Shane. So, Mind us what the so this is? is the addressing each other by our, yeah. our first I knew what the names. Concept was. I just so the, the right place. So the, K. K. 
Okay. So Margaret says, do we want to compel this? And the comment that was sent in is, they ne one person never liked it in the first place, but the other said there are going to be instances like Stan Rosenborg raised that uh, you might want, want you know, to be called counts. You know, in a much more formal setting, you might want to be addressing ourselves that way. So if we're silent on this, we can do what seems to work for the setting we're in, would be where I would go. But I'm also fine with leaving it in. I'm, you know, so I never found it, I haven't found it problematic. I, I think that Margaret's suggestion is a good one just to say may, because I think it's kind of cool that, that was the first, <laughs> that was like the first rule that we came up with. So and just change shell to may. Yeah, and that solves the problem completely. Right. Well, then it will still gives, gives us the flexibility of, to do whatever we want to in yeah, different yeah, occasions. Which is exactly my concern. So um, it gives us the, let's have a shared understanding of what that means. It gives us the flexibility to do it within a meeting or amongst different types of meetings because what we didn't want, and we specifically talked about when we proposed this rule to the president, is we didn't want a list of some people want to be called Councillor Schreiber and some people want to be called Steve. And so within a meeting, right, we don't want it to be like do whatever you want within the meeting because then nobody's going to know who we're talking about. Um, but I, I appreciate the concept of being more formal, but I don't know that we can effectively express without too many words that we mean in different settings we might want to. So maybe we just leave it alone would be my suggestion and know that in a different setting if our president is at some event somewhere and wants to say Councillor Haneke instead of that that's fine because we're this rule is really talking about how we talk to each other here. If we think that this respect issue is is so different, like San Rosenberg thinks, then it shouldn't be optional. We should absolutely always be calling each other counselor. He's not offering us flexibility. He's saying you're doing it wrong, mm -hmm. and so I'm not sure why. If this was a hearing versus a regular council meeting we would want to call each other something different. And I, again, we can't go back to the idea of, well, it's whatever your personal preference is at any given moment. I think we have to have some consistency within a meeting anyway. So I think there's two um, issues, well, two competing prospects with yes. this rule. The first one is by us referring to our first names, each other by first names, we make us more accessible to the public um, that the contrast of that is we're also less formal to the public so it doesn't seem as serious but the second one is that's how we're perceived by the public but then there's the how we operate to each other if we continue referring to each other by first names disagreement could feel much more personal when we get to a heated topic versus if we ourselves are referring to each other by Councillor Bob Milne or, you know, and that allows us to maintain a good, by doing it through Councillor, the argument is that would allow us to maintain good working relationships that are, um, where the disagreement doesn't feel like an attack on a person, it's an attack more on an idea than it becoming more personal. So there's the how does the public perceive us, but also does how we address each other alter our own working relationships either for better or worse, and which of those might be might be the way, which of those two weighs more on the decision side. And I think Stan's point to this counselor that made this was the using counselor and keeping it formal allows you to keep that, that sort of distance to allow you to work better in settings. And I might not be wording that well, but... Can we, um, so, wait, um, what I'm hearing is that uh, we don't want to pers make it feel personal, but adding the word counselor to me does not really change that, but could we instead just say that we don't 
talk about like, oh, I didn't like what Mandy said, but we can just talk about the issues and or go through the president, find some other way of dealing with this rather than just making it formal. Am I clear? So, no. so we, we just make a rule that's more about that we will not involve personalities or counselors, but uh, always just stay to the, speak to the issues. Well, we do have that in our we courtesy and conduct, you know, and I'm not sure whether shall or may is going to change our behavior that much, so shall is fine. You know, and I can understand Alyssa said we, sh we shouldn't be switching and each doing differently. The formalism, um, particularly when you're at a national legislative thing, people stay senators the rest of their lives. You know, <laughs> you know, they retired 20 years ago because they loved that title. But I, I don't necessarily think you distance yourself more from a human by calling them counselor, shaming them, and calling them Kathy. Um, you know, I understand you might, but I think you are still having a discussion with that person. Um, and, you know, in a courtroom, one way, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that that works for me as an argument. So I think if we feel like this is, so I could see just being silent on it, not making it a rule, or changing it to May, or leaving it as we had, because I think it's working well. So, and I'm also really worried that it's, I shouldn't call out time, but it's 1225 and we're at what I consider still the more smaller ones. If it's not causing a problem, should we be trying to fix it? Um, and I think the efficiency is improved. So it improves the efficiency in our working because it takes a whole lot longer to think of the counselor, <laughs> madam, whatever. And yeah, it's just the pros and cons of it, I think, so far. And we can always change it if you think it's, it's getting out of hand. I, so I say we leave it alone yeah. and just move on. Yeah. It still says shall. shall until we change it at a future. So the only other one was about a parliamentarian who is not a council member, which they mentioned in 6.4. Um, How on earth would that work? The only thing I could think of was that I'm you could name the t clerk of the council a formal parliamentarian and the president can but They said they wanted advice. a member of the public. Yeah, no, I, I, like I said, the only thing I could think of was that our clerk of the council becomes the go-to on parliamentary questions if Aren't we didn't already? want to do and that. I don't think we have to write it in because we've but. sometimes just asked, you know, what do we do here and gotten the opinion. So I think we're good. I mean, you, do you, unless you feel the need for it. I mean, every I, time I thought I, you'd turn to Every them. time I felt the need for it, I felt I could either get the answer from Paul or from um, Margaret. Yeah. And... Um, even then, there's been more recently a time where I had to go back and read Robert's rules. I had to look at our rules, and uh, I consulted with at least two other people who, four or three other people, um, and finally came up with what was okay or not okay. So the biggest problem is at the moment, and if you're gonna, either this is gonna be somebody we already pay, or it's gonna be an additional uh, burden because you, this person would then have to be at every council meeting. Right, and I, I think the person who sent in that comment, it's more when we had this appealing the decision of a president and we removed it. You know, so that's, that's out there, but, so I suggest we move to rule seven. And all I've got again is the market markup, so. There was nothing in the PDF on rule seven at all. So Margaret's suggestion, which everyone can see in the, in the comment, is do we want to add language that would, if you're going to make a motion, you know in advance you're going to make a motion, get the written motion in ahead of time, is the way I'm reading it. How does that work with open meeting law? I'm not sure I understand what she's talking I don't, about. I don't either. Um, the one time I can think of is when Lynn and I were in discussion about something that's now a potential rule. She said, are you going to make a motion? I said, I think I am. It's being a total new one, how I even do it. And she said, then I suggest you do it in writing. 
So I wrote it up, got it to the clerk who fine-tuned it a little bit so people could see in writing what I was going to otherwise be saying verbally. Um, so that's what I'm thinking this refers to, that if you know you're coming in with something, try, it's, it's clearly always around something we're discussing. It's not a new issue, but you know, you've read a report, but I don't, I'm looking at what she said, I don't think we need to do, say that here, um, right? I mean, it feels like maybe part of what she, she's not here, part of what she might be trying to get at is beyond her town meeting experiences where we did have very specific rules of don't make a motion on the floor unless you hand it out, so she might be thinking partly about that. But for our reality, I think what she's probably trying to encourage is exactly what you did, Kathy. You went to her and you said, I'm thinking of making a motion, or to the president, and said, I'm thinking of making a motion. What's the best way to do that? And you get advice, as opposed to this saying, this is what rule is. And so I, if we need to add a rule someplace that says, if you ever want to make a motion, feel free to ask for advice. You'll get some. But I don't necessarily feel like we have to say that but I can appreciate the concept of okay. encouraging people to ask for advice ahead of time. Okay, so then I suggest we, since there were no other comments, we move on to rule yeah. eight. There was something in seven six, Margaret had a comment right, on. Right, it's still in. She had a comment, so should we discuss that? Oh, right. Yeah, I got completely lost on that timeline situation so I was gonna be, I wrote ask Mandy Joe. <laughs> so motions to rescind or to amend something previously adopted have no timeline in Robert's rules um, so they can be made they have to be made on something that was adopted you can't rescind something that you didn't pass um, a motion for reconsideration is essentially to reconsider either something that goes either way um, and that has strict timelines. We put this in here because we changed what the vote requirement would be. Otherwise, it would just be garnered, uh, governed by Robert's rules. Um, so we just amended what Robert's rules requires for the vote quantum. So that's why it's in here. It never has a timeline. Um, I, I, it's, it's completely independent from motions for reconsideration because it's a, it's a different thing. It's not reopening the debate per se. It's saying, we passed something and now I just want to rescind it. So you're, I mean, it's similar, but it's different. And it doesn't, it doesn't have that timeline of let's that day of or the next meeting. It, it can happen at any time. So for example, um, when we didn't know what Shootsbury was going to do with the assessment method, a motion to reconsider our vote on the assessment method would have been out of order because it had been too many days. But we passed that assessment method. We could have moved to rescind it at any time. And rescission doesn't need to be by the person who voted in favor of it that last time. It could be by any of them, I think. There's not a... So my suggestion so I, is I would just that, not change it. So I would leave it this way, but I think since she, she's also, Margaret, our clerk, has been very carefully alerting us if we can or can't do something, that you, Mandy, go and talk that rationale through explaining what this wording means. We're on rule eight. Eight, and the only comments on rule eight are 8.2a. Do we want the word shall for specifying a time period? Might we use may? Are there times when a time period is not necessary? So that was sort of Margaret's sort of doing that too. Um, and then 8.2d and e, which is referrals for town manager appointments and bylaws. These are essential. Keep them in. <laughs> Those were the only comments on Rule 8. So then let's go back up to, so we're in 8, and 8 is so beautifully clean until we get to 8.2. And then it's, then I got confused, and I said in my note, does not scan as rewritten. Is she trying to say any and every measure of any kind has to automatically go to a committee? I, I got lost in her rewording there. Um, what she was trying to accomplish. Because not every single measure 
needs to be referred, but yet she said the workflow should be through the council. So I don't think her right. edits, uh, I, would reject, I would reject her edits. Let's just be. I, I think she wanted any measure to go through a committee no matter what. Yeah, and that and was I, the change I don't to think shall. we should, we might consider some ourselves or we might be a committee of the whole. Right. Or, frankly, there are proclamations that are considered measures that don't necessarily need to go through a committee. <laughs> so, reject. She, she's inserted the words the town manager, and um, I don't think. That might be useful. It may of refer a specific measure committee. Or body. That, that's okay with me. Does, I mean, does that sound like something you, you might want to yeah, do? So it says may or. May. And refer and includes town manager. Yeah, absolutely. So as long as it says may, and then we're not saying that every measure, then it just gives us more flexibility. And it might as well be said rather. I mean, I don't think anybody's okay. going to yell at you. Yeah, if you I've did, made that but, change. Yeah, yeah. And I, I think the may, comment I read on 8.2a actually referred to B. Do we want the word shall for speci specifying a time period? Might we use may? Are there times when a time period is not necessary? So that was, I think, in reference to 8.2b, not a. A council committee shall report back. So within 45 days. I, the only thing I'm, I'm just thinking about one, for example, the speed law thing. You know, I'm, it was referred to CRC, but in terms of priority issues and in terms of them working with TAC on it, that 45 days just might not work. So I'm concerned. What we had discussed was when we put that in is the report back could be we're still working on oh, it. Exactly. That's, that's <laughs> it, it, it's so it's not just in a void forever. It's that at least at 45 yeah, days, you have I, to say something. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's in, the intention is just a check-in point. It's still on the agenda. Yeah. And so I still want 8.2A, which we altered to keep saying May, but also add the town manager. Yep. I want the second sentence where it says, so I'll specify a time period for a committee to work back. I want that to stay. And it's fine with me if, as a council, we say, we don't care when that time period is, or that time period yep. is 30 days, or it's 85 days. But not saying it means that we might forget to say it. So I think it's important to say something, but it could be the, completely The only change in A now it is that report back. And all yes. it says is we're making progress or we haven't dealt with it. Yes. That's fine. Leave it at 45. So yeah, the only change in A is to add the word the town manager. There's no change in B. Correct. Now we're on C. And yeah, I don't know what that reference to the printing of the I think that was. came from some other rule from it another did, it town. Did. It did. It was like. Um, oh, we stole it from somewhere yeah, else. <laughs> it, it, it really was. Can we just get you just gone? Sure. Because <laughs> then we then it gets removed out of 8.6 as well. It's the exact same phrase that we just bar borrowed helpfully from somewhere else. So we don't need it. Cool. We like the easy and ones. Can I just raise an interesting issue? We had a. Um, and I don't think it's going to refer, I don't think this is going to only occur once. The president, the, I mean, the town manager is ordered to, find, to file his budget on May 1st. By this rule, it's automatically referred. That meant that the finance committee had to come back to the town council by, by May 30th because of the other rule that says they have to come back by May 30th. This year, because we didn't happen to have this rule and we didn't have a vote to automatically refer the budget, we had to take out the vote on the 6th, which fortunately gave the Finance Committee until the June 3rd meeting to come back to the Council. It's, and because of the month of May always having 31 days, it's always going to be an interesting thing. That, and, it, you know, it's just one of those quirky little calendar items. Because the 30 days is specified in the charter. Yeah. The, the Finance Committee has to report back on the budget within 30 days of referral. So it's a report back. It's not the council then has to vote. That report in theory what she's can maybe be distributed. Language, right. yeah. Our language, as we've written it, is on May 1st, it would have been in the Finance Committee's hands, 
and then the 30 days would have been the end of May. But because we waited till the, it got to the first council meeting and then the clock started ticking on May 6th, not on May 1st, correct, Lynn? So That's correct. And, it, it, and you know, to be honest, it gave the town manager the opportunity to give us a brief presentation, which I thought was a good way to count, if you will, to uh, kick off budget season. Um, I know the press wanted to know when I got here that night whether he was going to do that. So I don't know whether you want to deal with this separately so we, or how you want to deal with it. But I, I, I actually think we should would, do I would be, do we, this is, is this re Required in the charter, the automatic, Mandy? No, so we're just trying to fish, make things efficient. It's so required to be referred to the finance committee, but it's not required to be automatically so referred. And I have no problem with the automatic. I'm just pointing out one little quirky. Yeah. So what issue. we could do is every year we vote to refer the budget itself to the committee, and so we would pull that out of C all measures, and then the parentheses, instead of saying except for printing of the annual report, right. says except for the annual yes. budget. Yes. I like that. Are we, are we, am I just removing the word automatically from this? What, what am I doing to change this? No, we would, we would have all measures authorizing a loan, comma, the levying of a tax, comma, or the expenditure of money except for the annual budget comma shall be automatically referred to the finance committee so that the council always has to vote on the referral of the budget so that we control the 30-day timeline on the budget since it has to be submitted to the council by may 1 that sometimes that might be submitted april 27th no that's a great change i thought so too until i reread this section of the charter so top me down mandy joe 5.5 .5 action on the budget immediately upon its receipt of the proposed budget, which would be May 1st, the town council shall refer the budget to the town council's finance committee. That's the word out of the, the charter. See, I was thinking that it, we were being driven by the charter here. It doesn't say wait till whenever your meeting is. It says immediately shall refer. I would argue that's already an automatic referral that we didn't even ask and for. And then the, <laughs> what the rest of it says, the, the finance committee shall report back in 30 days. But what happens when there isn't a meeting at 30 days? I mean, I'll be honest with you, that would have meant that in we order to make a 30-day law, we would either have the report from the finance committee on the 20th of May, or we would have to call a special meeting by the 30th of May. It, it's this. It, this is already. I don't have to tell you all. I mean, it's we're meeting twice a week for up to three hours each time, just to get the budget done. Yeah, I, I think this ties. I, the way it's written, I feel like it ties our hands in the charter. It says immediately upon receipt, refers, and then thirty days within that referral. And so I think that we. I don't think we did have that option this year. I think we didn't follow what the charter said. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't it's, think that's a problem. Well, but yeah, so I think it depends on what what is a vote to refer and what does refer mean. Immediately, it's at the first meeting after we received, we voted to refer because if you don't vote unless you've got a rule that says it's referred, some somehow it needs a vote. Arguably, it could also be that there's no vote here. It's that that's the town true. council shall refer that there doesn't need, this arguably could be yeah. interpreted to say that no vote is required to refer, that it just happens magically, which thus causes us the problems of 30 days of referral. So I think, yeah, so maybe we don't exempt it and the finance committee might logically talk to the finance committee in Northampton and East Hampton about what they do. I don't think the 30 days was something we made up as a charter commission. I think it was generally in um, charters. And so see how they handle review of the budget. We've been doing it as our old finance committee does, which is which was under a different system. Maybe in cities, the finance committee does some other type of review that's not like we're trying to get done this year. And it might be logical to talk to their finance committees to see 
how they do that review in 30 days. Got it. So we're leaving this language, recognizing we likely have a logistical challenge and trying to figure out how we can somehow juggle the two sections of the charter that have the goes right away and reporting back in 30 days without it having scrunching. Yeah. And I could, yeah. You know, in a, once we understand what we're doing under this whole new, you know, even with the review, uh, if we have from the town manager, I'm giving it to you on May 1st, we can have, we had already this year, every meeting was already organized with the notion of when the report back is. And the report back, since the council doesn't have to vote on it till the end of June, can still the, be the first major consideration is at a June meeting. You know, we, we just have to go, what you're just saying is, uh, there's no way that there'll be a formal report back can report back be construed as the recommendation has been made available to the council, but not necessarily at a meeting? No, the charter says review, thoroughly review and make a presentation and yeah. recommendation within 30 days. So I think the recommendation is in a report. If the report includes, I mean, how do you interpret presentation? That could be... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> charter commission I, doesn't I, always I, think I, things through. Um, but yeah, that, 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 that one I really got. I, I would absolutely agree. Recommendation can be in paper form, yeah. not at a meeting. I mean, and this doesn't say at a meeting, even if you see presentation, it doesn't say at a meeting. Mm -hmm. A report might be able to be interpreted as a presentation if it's descriptive enough. Okay, so I have my notes. I'm going to ask Northampton, <laughs> and I have to say, when uh, I first picked this up and was thinking, hmm, if I get elected, I want to be on finance. And I looked at it and I said, holy mackerel. I have a little thing, really short timeline. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on. So we have identified a flaw that we can't fix via rules. So, so the only comment on rule nine, I think there's only one, is 9.5. It doesn't seem to include authorization of borrowing, which I think Margaret caught too. So I think she added something in about borrowing authorization. Um, that is the only Where was rule that? nine. It's, it's on page 24, I think. Oh, it's in a different section. It's on my 24. It's in like items requiring at least two thirds of councilors present and voting yes. to vote in favor is where Margaret added it. Um, borrowing authorization. Okay, so, so she's already or she's already added. caught that one okay. that was a comment from the councilor and that was the only rule nine comment from a councilor. Okay. She has a comment. Under 9.2, she wanted to know what under certain cert conditions might mean. That was the way. Can we the can we leave it yeah. vague enough that we there what what those conditions might be? Those conditions are set forth in Charter Section 2.10. Okay, so I'm happy, you know, I'm happy not explaining all of this here. If if that if that is literally in charter. Why don't you refer oh, to the section of the charter? We do. We, do. we, we did. Do. It's actually not in there. Any proposed bylaw shall be published. No. Um, it's actually not what I thought it's, it was. It is when I not. At it. Yeah. Uh, prior to final passage, each proposed oh, bylaw shall be read at two separate council meetings except as provided in 210B. So that's the non emergency. So 210B says you don't have to read it at two meetings. So it's I, do just we just delete that section? So just do, do I just delete reading may be waived under certain conditions? Do I am I deleting just that? Just delete sentence? that sentence. That sentence? Okay. 
the reading may be waived sentence. Yeah. Because really it's just talking about emergencies. It isn't like I've read in some other communities where they say if this, if this, if this. It's right. Not those we kind of we created the long ones. If it's really long, you can. Yeah, where does it say that? Because that's what I was looking for. That was in. That that's might be exactly in 10. That's what I was looking for. Is that in 10? Is that we said if it was super long, we didn't have to read no, it No, that's in measures and bylaws. So that's, that's, that's in this eight, rule eight Where did I miss somewhere. Um, so we've got 10 minutes left. Yeah. Ah, the discussion need not include the specific language of the measure to be voted, but shall include the substance of the measure is that kind of where we thought we covered that um, maybe we I think it's 8.3 I don't know there's something in rule 8 somewhere oh yes 8.3 C in order to expedite deliberations may waive the reading of the proposed bylaw provided that a brief summary shall be provided yeah. and read by the town manager a counselor or by the bylaw sponsor so if it's 20 pages long they can read a so, so instead of referring to the charter section, so in nine, yes. So in nine, the charter section two ten a reference should be before the reading sentence, and then after, so it should be after the first sentence of that line, and then reading may be waived under certain conditions. Ah. Should be rule eight point, was it two eight point three c eight point three c eight point three c. We're just creating our own waiver on reading. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's where we did. That's why I got confused when I went back to the charter. I'm like, but it's not in here because the emergency stuff is what's in the charter. Yeah. Right. So the charter reference goes between the two sentences and the rules reference gets added at the end of the I second I guess the sentence. reading is technically reading the change, like not just considering it. It is an actual reading of the thing. I have the council must read a proposed blah 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 and then the charter reference readings may be waived under certain circumstances period see rule 8.3 C yes. yes exactly so the borrowing thing got picked up Margaret caught the borrowing and uh, I'm just accept, uh, well, I'm leaving it as a track, but it, everything is fine as is. Okay. It needs a period after MGL chapter 44, multiple sections, just for consistency. Are we at 10? I think 10? we're ready to move to 10. I was just glancing over the council comments again, but I think we are indeed ready for 10. Fortunately, 10 had a lot. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, Do you want to? Can I take them just by rule? 10 1? Yeah. 10 1, no. agree that committees should take no action that is binding to the council without the whole council being able to vote on it. Committees should not make policy on their own. Option for committee charges to govern opens way for manipulation and sophistry. Keep it simple. Another one said, I strongly prefer option two. Um, a liberal interpret interpretation of option one could grind some committee deliberations to a halt or unnecessarily slow them. It also is less efficient as it consumes more time of the full council for things that can be handled at the committee level. It makes more sense for charges to be very specific about what committees can do. And it makes sense that committees should be able to delegate work to subcommittees, which is a more logical term than work groups. So that must be a different, sorry, that's a different rule. Never mind. I'll get to that one later. And we've, we since um, changed this council committee shall take no action that would bind the council period. We put that in. People didn't see that before. Right. And that right. was, so one that's of the comments suggested that right. it actually went, further and said without the council first voting or something, but I think. So just to be clear, and I know we had this conversation on the 6th, though to be clear, when we say take no action that would bind the council, does that mean that as currently formulated, OCA bringing a certain set of appointments to the council has already bound the council? 
Okay, good. No, because it's, no, because because it's subject to a final council yeah, decision. We're, we're okay, cool. Absolutely. No, exactly. Sure, we're clear on that. Right. And Bind the, means what? <laughs> and when we, when we talked about this at the last meeting, I had suggested that the sentence be uh, council committees shall be advisory and take no action that would bind the council. And I think two of us thought that was good and two didn't and Shalini wasn't here. Right. Um, so that was just like an additional two words. And right. So just so Shalini understands, if you're looking at the wording here, it says council committee shall take no action that would bind the council we agreed on that but we were two to two on having more two more words council committee shall be advisory and take no action that would be would bind the council so we didn't put shall be advisory in so the you know we're coming back to the full council now with an amended of the amendment um, so we should decide whether we like this wording or we want the other wording is adding be advisory. Shall be advisory and take no action that would bind the council. She, she doesn't like being put in the hot seat here. I'm turning to you just on a, you weren't here to participate. In we this actually decision. said, well, let's wait until next week when Shawnee will be here. What, what does advisory mean? I like it the way it is right now. Okay. But I mean, I haven't heard the full arguments. What was I might be missing something? I don't know if you want to go there or we just want to move on. I like this. I, I did see this and I like the addition that would not bind the council. Um, I, I'm just a little bit afraid that people won't understand exactly what that means, what an action is and what binding the council is. It, you know, it's kind of like a archaic language. And, so I think advisory is more clear, and it says more what's in A and B, um, or, or in option one. And um, so it would, it would just underline that committees bring recommendations, and then the council acts on them. When we say it's capturing more of A and B, what, you mean the A and B that have been deleted? because we replaced all that with, we replaced the options right. we previously offered with a new phrase about no action. Right, right. Okay. Given that you had, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Lynn. Given that there were so many suggestions on this and you rewrote it completely, I would even consider going back with the rewrite the way you have it and then the rewrite with of uh, the advisory and. In other words, do some counselors think that should be in there or not be there? So, I like the rewrite. I really do. I think it's much clearer, but I'm just wondering if you want to give the council that. So I don't think we've given them any other options up until this point. I think everything else we've resolved up to this point. And so I think I'm more comfortable with going ahead and choosing one and saying this is what, I understand entirely what you're saying, but given that we don't have a bunch of those option one, option two situations this time, I think up until this point we have resolved everything today. Maybe not to everyone's satisfaction, but we've come to something that we can agree on well, presenting. So I'm, I'm uneasy with presenting, high, calling this one out separately. Well, can I ask for a straw vote then because I would prefer adding shall be advisory and take no action. So I would add those words and uh, we could do a, a raising of hands and you know just to get a sentiment how much does how much clearer to me that makes it even clearer. It doesn't change it it just makes it even clearer. So I would propose adding the words <laughs> shall be advisory and take mm -hmm. no action that would bind the council. What was the argument for not having um, the word advisory? Um, Alyssa, I think, well, I can't speak. Well, it's, it's, you know, to me, to me it, it means, what the meaning to me is when you say can't bind the council is that they're advising the council and the council's taking the action that's going to bind it. So they shouldn't go out um, and promote 
a cer certain way of doing things till we vote it. So it makes yeah. it very clear that we're sending things to them and asking for a report back before we take an action. Yeah. I, I just wanted to hear what was the argument for not having the word. Okay, advice. so what is I, the argument for I not wording those think words? I'm trying to rack my brain. I think some of it was that not everything a committee does is advisory, but that doesn't mean it binds the council. If you take GOL, for example, we simply declare something actionable or not. That's not really advisory. That's not saying yes or no on adopting, it's just saying this is clear, this is not. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's p potentially stuff in the OCA committee on the outreach side and communication side that doesn't really, isn't really an action for the council because they're working on outreach. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and how are we gonna outreach that, that might not, be an, you know, they might decide we're gonna try this. That's not really binding the council to any particular decision, but it is making a decision. It's not an advisory action if they're gonna say, hey, we're going to do this thing for district meetings or we're gonna create this calendar. That's not an action that binds the council to having to act or not act, but it is something that is not advisory that a committee is doing. So that's, I think, some of the arguments is there are things committees do that aren't necessarily just to advise the council as a whole. They have some other duties. So, and so putting those words in might restrict that so, too. So Mandy, do you think by shall be advisory means that they can't act at all? Is, is that the way you're doing it? Like even on, you know, because I think the actions you're talking about don't bind us in any way. If they're trying different ways of doing act, you know, of doing outreach, they're experimenting with does this work, does that work? I don't think it binds us. I, in I any agree way. that it doesn't bind, but it's also not advisory. Right. And so when you add council committees shall be advisory, they're doing things that aren't advisory either. And so where does that fit into that sentence when those words are added? I'm, I can't have a st strong view on this other than I don't want the committees to bind us. So that's the most important thing that's for me. That's the clear part. Yeah, that's the clear part to me too. Darcy? I'm just looking at Darcy. Uh, I, I liked Lynn's idea of, of just asking the council, the full council. And I do think this is probably the most important rule that we're deciding on, so. Um, um, and we're kind of deciding whether it should be good or better. <laughs> uh, because they're both, you know, they're both saying similar things. One is just stronger than the other as far as making it clear. Um, so. So, um, we, this is going back for May 20th. That is The correct. adoption of it. That, the, the that is correct. And then the adoption of it isn't, doesn't have to be till June 3rd. So if this were the only place in the document where we said we have choice A or B, it would be easy to talk about it on May 20th and then to quickly go through other changes we've made that were responsive. So I would make a motion to have one choice in this document, which would be this and just these two. This one as is, as an A, and we go choice one or choice two. And I'm making a motion, yes. I second that motion. I, I just, I, this meeting's been long. Did we leave the deliver, the, the clapping one? Then I want the clapping as a choice? back. I mean, or did we? Choice. No, we didn't make. We, we didn't. didn't. She, no. Alyssa, so, uh, Alyssa moved to remove. She it. conceded because yeah. she thought we weren't providing options in this document. Yeah. Uh, if we're going back to providing options, then we're going to have a different it. conversation. Uh, I am really, really think we all agree that it's true that the statement that's there now, council committee shall take no action by the council, is true and accurate. If Adding the word advisory will prevent us from having to, 
to provide options to the council, then I would actually concede that as well because we have taken more than 10 minutes to argue about this amongst ourselves and we aren't still 100% certain what advisory okay. adds to the sentence. 13 will not have that easy of an option figuring that out either. Okay. So let's give them what we think makes sense and be done with it. Okay, then I, I'll back off my motion. But here's a suggestion. When this is presented, can, and we get to this, that we changed the earlier, and here's our new language, that there was a discussion on whether we should add Shelby advisor, and we'd like a sense. So not put it in the document, but just right. have the presenter, yes. i.e. Alyssa, um, make that comment so that people can pause and think about this. Right, does the word, yes. Okay, so yeah. I withdraw my motion. So right now, the way it looks though, and with that added concept during the report that I just wrote during report, um, is that it's gonna read, the council committee shall take no action and the track changes will show that the both options have been removed because we no longer need any of that language because this that's, now substitutes. That's correct, That's if you look at it, it's simple. That's the way it reads right And now. then the other question I have is just above that where Margaret made a suggestion, I disagree with her suggestion based on conversations we've had at this very body. She said, we said domains, which I know was kind of a funky way to put it, but she says approved charges, and I thought this committee said that there might be some things that the, that these committees perceive to be within their bailiwick. I, I want to reject her change. Yeah, I want to reject that change. Are we good with that? Can you just send me that again? Um, in 10.1, in the introductory paragraph. Great, so <laughs> that was easy. Uh, reject the change because we actually were leaving it open on Are purpose. Are we down to 10.2 now? There were two comments on 10.2 yes. if we're done with 10.1. The first one is 10.23. Um, uh, I guess we had numbers at some point. Prefer option two, president ex officio of all committees, but without authority to make motions or vote. Other counselors may participate as members of the public. The president oversees all committees. So I guess that's just someone prefers that option. Um, and then someone else said, I believe the current system has been working fine and worry about the increased power assigned to a president if given ex officio membership to every, every committee, prefer option one. What we did last time is we did go down back to option one because we took a vote and we decided that the vote would rule. So we have already addressed, one person would have liked it the, the, way, the alternative, but I think we made that decision. So I think in the clean version, we only have, um, you know, we don't have anything about ex officio at all. That's gone. About oversee? We put well, up, We put that up we at put the front. Up, we yes. went back and okay. said the word oversee, let's bring it back up and say one of the things the president does is oversee and we added it back to the president's duties. So I think we're moving then to, I got comments on 10.5, but I think Margaret had something on 10.4. So I think what Margaret's trying to get at is as opposed to the work groups where we might include staff, that ad hoc committees directly are counselors, but then they shouldn't be counselor members, they are counselors. There is no such thing as council members. But as we've seen with FinCom, you could put residents that are non, you could put non-counselors on council committees, and it's just the president appoints those I so, think she's asking us if we want to limit it. Yeah. Well, and, and are we on 10.4 sure right now? Yes. yes. I would not change of council So let's members. just leave it alone. Leave it alone. Reject her meeting. change. Right, because I actually, at the meeting we had this weekend, TAC has some subcommittees or ad hoc committees where they deliberately pulled residents on them. You know, so right. it wasn't. We may want residents on ad hocs, exactly. So that brings us to the work groups. And I will just read two comments on this one. I'm confused by the statement work groups 
a statement, quote, work groups are usually subject to open meeting law, end quote, are they not always subject to open meeting law? Um, someone else said, it makes sense that committees should be able to delegate work to subcommittees, which is a more logical term than, quote, work groups. Subcommittees must comply with open meeting law. The work of the council should not be shared with people who are not elected except as specifically authorized by the council. The authority should not be delegated to a committee. That authority should not be delegated to a committee. Does, uh, and that, I read that comment, and I wasn't sure, you know, in terms of, since this is my first time on a town council. <laughs> um, I know from these other committees in town that they can go ahead and create a subcommittee or a work group that doesn't have officially appointed people in it. You know, it's, it's, they're going after one particular thing that they're doing. So could we as a legislative body not allow our committees to do that? I mean, can't we be permissive here? I don't see that we would be more restricted just because we were elected. And I think particularly of a committee like CRC, they might, you might well want to say, we need, you know, housing policies come to us. We need to convene a, a subgroup with some other people on it to, to think this through and then bring it back to, we're not delegating our authority, we're just asking for more study and then they bring it back and it's still going through the committee which is only counselors. So I think some thought would be if you got a housing policy and you don't feel you're expert enough to figure out the implications of a housing policy that you use the town committees that exist that are expert in housing policy to figure out the implications on housing of that and um, that you would use maybe the TAC to figure out the implications of that proposed policy on transportation if you as a committee don't think the committee is expert enough to do those things and then the committee of the council is the place where it takes all of those opinions on that one policy potentially and says what is, how do we weigh those pros and cons on transportation on this, on that to make a recommendation to the council that, that maybe the best thing to do instead of creating subcommittees with new residents is to say, well, we have a town committee that knows how to interpret a policy and how it will implicate X. And so let's ask them for their opinion on this policy, even if it wasn't originated from that committee. Um, I think that's one thought process. And another is, well, we're not going to use our town committees. We're going to create our own subcommittees with our own residents that aren't, that might have differing expertise. When, when when we did this, one of the things I was thinking of was the proposal that came to the town council of this super entity that's an analytic body. I don't think committees are always neutral. You know, they were set up to do affordable housing or they were set up to promote whatever. If you wanted a small group to weigh the pros and cons and come back with you with how this might work, it would, could a committee, our subcommittee, our council committees might want to do that to say, you know, how can we go out and get more information on this? And it might cr be a real crossover where we're pulling one from two or three different entities in town and a few from outside. So that's all I read this as that, that it was permissive. We didn't have to do these, but we could create a pretty eclectic group that we send out um, that are more neutral than the entities that normally bring those proposals to us might be. So my, and I don't necessarily have a problem. My intellectual option went to what Margaret asked, who appoints? And so I think we left that right. open on purpose. Yeah. Because that changes if it's the chair of the committee appointing all of the members of the work group, that would potentially also skew to an opinion. Right. Well, um, that's why you leave it up to the group, to the, you leave it up to the standing, I thought what we said before was you, the standing or ad hoc council committee that's considering doing this is we need a work group to do all the things we just talked about. How will we pick those people? 
and this group might pick the work group by doing XYZ method, and this group might pick the works group by using ABC method, that we were not going to control that. We were going to see how it played out. Does that contravene, and, and I have no idea what the answer to this is, the charter, since it is a council committee creating this group, does it contravene the charter that states that the president appoints all members of council committees ad hoc or standing? Since it is, in some sense, a subcommittee of a council committee, would it contravene that to not have the president appointing those work groups? And I don't know what the answer is, but I bring that up. Go ahead, Lynn. One of the things that I find confusing about this is um, that if we have a naughty issue, okay, that it should be something that's recognized by the full council and that we could decide to create a study commission. And that's one issue. The second issue, and it, it may not fall within the purview of a committee, but it might fall within the purview of a committee, and I would still expect the committee to come to the full council before they start creating groups. That's number one. The second thing, and this comes, just comes from my conversations with both Paul and Margaret, um, and I don't, I'm not speaking for them, but I'm just saying that they, they both have expressed to me serious discomfort in having a combination of counselors and residents on committees. They feel like counselors walk into a committee and we are, have more, we, we bring in a weight much more um, heavy and sought after than any other member in the group. And then when we speak, it is constantly clarifying that we do not speak for the council. And it's just an ongoing thing, a debate that we've been having. And we, we have created one of these committees, and we all went with it, and we'll wait and see how that goes. Um, but it's an issue of um, those two issues for me. If we really need as a committee to look at the speed limit, I would not expect CRC or, or TAC to create a subcommittee. I would expect them to come to us and say, you referred this to us, this is what we'd like to do and have them do. And I think that's exactly what we didn't talk about. I mean, we talked about it and we said that's not what we want. We want these groups to be able to do that on their own because they're already studying the issue, because they want this on a very permanent, term, not permanent <coughs> basis. They don't want to have to go back to the council to get permission to assign one person who's already on that committee to go talk to somebody who's on the housing trust and a staff member about a particular issue. They don't want to have to come back. That, that was our goal. Dorsey has a That's not forming a committee. That's just going and talking to That's experts. That's why we're calling it a work group. Mm -hmm. I, I think that it was an attempt to, to establish something innovative and flexible and, um, you know, giving uh, the opportunity, especially to residents, of which we have like a wealth of smart people out there, um, to be able to, to use that, you know, to use that resource that we have to be able to get some of the information that the different committees need, not in a political way, but just to be able to use all of the people that are interested in in helping out with a new form of government. And I don't disagree with that. What I disagree with, and I can wait to the council meeting and say this and not delay this any longer. I disagree with committees just going out and creating other committees. If somebody comes back, some committee comes back, we have a recommendation. Well, how did that form? Oh, well, it formed from this work group. Well, who the hell appointed them? <laughs> so if we, I'm looking at our wording, so, and I think we wouldn't actually want an ad hoc committee to do this as I look at it. I think we're more likely to want one of our standing committees. If a standing committee decides they need, that they think we would benefit from a work group like this, they should come back to the council with the suggestion of creating, is that, is that the, you know, because it might not be at the council level we saw it first. Um, and this is written under 10, which is all about committees. Way back in the council, we didn't say the council can 
create a study group or can create a, a commission when it needs to. So this was our, the opportunity, the place we put, how do we pull in on all these town people that might know a lot to bring to bear on a complicated issue where we're not ready to vote on it yet, but we want them to go out and come back with us. So the more I think about this, the more I think we delete I, I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of deleting work groups completely. We have provided for, you know, if it's a study commission or a select committee, we've talked about those terms before, and we just said standing ad hoc council town. If a council committee comes back with, you know, we need more experts to really investigate this matter that was referred to us, our recommendation is create a new committee to deal with that, that goes to the council. The council has all authority to create a town committee to deal with that. It can be an ad hoc committee. It doesn't have to be a standing committee. It would have to comply with open meeting law. Um, we probably want committees dealing with gnarly issues to comply with open meeting law. And so maybe we have the ability in other sections to do what this does, but in a manner that is actually more transparent because it comes through a full council meeting instead of a subcommittee that might create something that may or may not be, because it's not clear, and that's one of Margaret's things, subject to open meeting law that might go under the radar. How do people know that they can? Is it really an open process for applying to be on the work group or not? You know, all we're leaving that up to, you know, I, the more I think about this, the more I think just, in my opinion, delete five, ten five. Um, well, I think conceptually we need something like this. So the, to me, what, what I was hearing is placing it would you want an ad hoc committee of the council to set this up? Usually the ad hoc committee was already set up to deal with something short term. You know, that it's, so it's more our standing committees or the full council, either one, determines they need something like this. It's not the same as a committee. It is, you're being sent out and, you know, over the next two months and we want to report back on this particular set of issues, it feels very different than a committee, you know, which has a charge and a, it's, it is a work group, a study group, whatever you want to call it, um, that isn't the same. And then I understand we're going to like, who picks who goes on it is an issue. You know, how do we get the right balance? But it is, you know, in a, assessing a more complicated issue that might, could well not have any counselor on it other than reporting back to the council. So I, I just don't know, how, ahead, you know, I think we've got two issues. It's, it's we've, got a, we've located it only under com committees rather than the whole council. And you might well want the whole council saying, yeah, we need a, we need a group like this. It's not just uh, finance decided they needed it or rules, rules will be gone, but. <laughs> And we base this on uh, uh, practices that other towns had. Many towns had this. This wasn't a one-off. I mean, I can go back. I found it in a lot of towns, and I thought they were trying to say that on our council, we don't necessarily have what we need. And sometimes we need to send it out with a comeback before we pick up what the policy should be, because we and, don't have enough information. And my only issue is that I don't think a committee should do that. I think right. they should come to the council. So that's what I'm saying, Lynn, no, that I think we've got it placed in the wrong place here, and we need to think of a committee might decide, we think we all need this, and they come back and they tell the council, I think we need one of these, and we, we authorize it. You know, we figure out what it looks like. So all that understood. My problem is logistics. This was always meant, these were always meant to comply with open meeting law, meaning if one person on a standing committee, so you're, you have a standing committee that decides it needs some expertise on something. They send one member of the standing committee who is in fact, of course, a counselor, because that's who's on standing committees, and they send them off to meet with a staff person and a chair of another committee, and they say, go off and do something. That's actually not subject to open meeting law, because it's one counselor, and that's why it says, usually, subject to open meeting law. There is no rule 
under what we envisioned that it would have to be two counselors. It could very well have been one who was sent off to talk with the president of the chamber and somebody else. And I appreciate what has been said about, well, you could just do that informally already without calling it a work group. And maybe that's something we need to make sure is clear to our committees because what what's being proposed as, well, we could just change that, I think is completely unworkable in that I sit at a committee meeting and we say, you know, we really need three people to get together and work on this for two weeks. Okay, so we'll go to the next council meeting, we'll write a charge, we'll revise that charge, GOL will look at that charge at some point, then we'll have to argue over who gets to appoint the members of that committee, and by that time it's now two months later. And like we haven't done any of the things we said we were gonna do. So is it more that we feel like because of the weird logistics as who appoints and all that and authority given to the council versus to standing or I would argue ad hoc committee might very well have wanted to send a person officially off to some place to meet with other people. Do we just say all of this is moot because we should all feel like we can do that now and that we just need to be cautious that if we're sending two members of a committee away, remember don't screw up open meeting law? Is can, that a real bottom Can I line? ask two things? OCA sub formed a subcommittee. Would that be considered a work group? Or is that something else completely? Because OCA's already got a subcommittee. Where does that fall in this I, grouping? Because I, I think they had every right to form that subcommittee too. of OCA members. We didn't um, include anybody else. Right, in it, though. yeah. So subcommittees, subcommittees are don't need a new rule, I don't think. Right. And what you're describing, GOL did. GOL in a meeting said, hey, have we talked to so-and-so, you know, select board members about public ways and their experiences. Hey, Mandy, go off and do that. What if you needed to meet three times to do that rather than to have one conversation? Well, I'm, I'm going to make a suggestion just yes. because we have another meeting starting time. at 2 o'clock that is going to be a three-hour meeting. Um, so just for some of us that even though you observed, I didn't need a bathroom break, I actually need water right now. I, so I think we've raised a series of concerns about this in terms of what it exactly is and how it would function. Mm -hmm. So uh, we may, in the draft, this is, I'm thinking this through, in the draft that we're sending back for the council to look at, leave this yellow saying, this needs more work. We need to figure out how to write it, where to place it. A series of things have been, you know, something, just leave it the only real yellow shaded. If we can't fix it right now, and we don't know where to put it, um, but we, rather than delete it or edit it, and then my next suggestion is, I don't, there were a series of things coming later that, uh, wanted to give the president the appointment for J, appointing power for JCPC and BRG not leave it this new way we proposed. Didn't want liaisons to be chosen by a straw vote, had some alternatives. And we left it that liaisons will be, we figure out it later. So do we need to talk through all of those now um, if we're willing to spend like four more minutes on it? Um, how do we do that we need a draft for next Monday? Right. In order to get to the draft point, I want to take work groups out and put it on the list of issues that GOL needs to address in the future. I'm unwilling to say, because we don't want them to vote on this. We don't want them to vote to accept it when we still have so many unanswered questions. So I think we can pull it out, and if we have to just put it on a separate page and say, this is really important to us, but this isn't part of these rules. And can we, Alyssa, can you copy and paste the entire wording yeah. on this to yeah, say exactly. we didn't... We didn't say we don't want these. We just need them <laughs> yep. to figure out how to organize them. And I just, you know, when GOL does it, Mandy, I'd really like to be there because I, I think this is essential for us to figure out a really nimble way of doing it, not to set up whole yes, new committees. Exactly. exactly. And sometimes they're going to be for. two months. We don't want them to come back in two weeks. This is really go out and find out a lot more and come back with us. Uh, it is, and it's not quite a study commission. You know, it's not quite that big. Um, mm -hmm. okay. Yep, yep, really, really important to us. And so, yes, did we want to change anything on the JC? Now that we've heard the input, right, we listened, we read over the last couple of days, the JCPC and BCG, did we want to change that? Because we had made a point 
of having a rule about that, and we got counselor comments that said, no, just have the president do it. So we skipped over 10.6. 10.6 um, I ah. needs to say 3.5 A. Okay. Minutes shall comply with 3.5 A, which I think takes care of um, the comment we received on that matter. Yeah, that person was saying that minutes right. content's already covered. Well, that's not true. Minutes content is covered by those things yeah. plus our rules. Yeah. And then there was the, uh, that was the only 10.6 comment. So yeah. 10.7 was the JCPC. Someone said president appoint. Did anybody change their mind on that? Having I processed didn't. that theory? No, didn't change. I don't think anybody changed their mind on that. So thank you for your input, and we don't agree. So um, I, I there realize was a 10 we're skipping 6 around. J. Here. Yeah. Um, what does right and obligation yes. to be creative mean? We left that highlighted anyway. So it won't be highlighted anymore in the new version. Nothing's going to be highlighted in the new version. So unless we want to change the wording now and in response to that comment, it's just going to have the highlight removed and, and right. be accepted. Okay. And 10.7 actually had two comments that said president appointment. Yes. Not just one. Sorry, um, I was if I misled on that. So where am I? Get, get me quickly I, I, to it. I just saw the second. So we're that was just me. Point, we're up to 10.7. Yeah, and, we just and there were two counselors who disagreed with our theory right. of having. No, the, that I yeah. know, but where is the? So that was they disagreed, but we. Right. I said so. We're going to we keep it. But we haven't changed our minds. But was there an edit here too? No, the the edit. Well, we were simply talking about just above that in 10.6. We already fixed the reference in letter I, and then in letter J, we were just taking the yellow off although we were cognizant of a counselor opinion that said, I don't know Yellow what that means. Yellow will come off everything. Yeah. But they said, we don't know what it means, but we decided, we, we have decided by not deciding that we don't have any further way of elaborating. No, I have that. So that. I, we'd already fixed the reference, like we hadn't, ref we, rule 3.5, right? A, 3.5A. Oh. That's what Mandy Joe said, right? 3.5A. And J, we're just, even though we got the comment that they're not sure what that means, we're leaving the wording alone, or did got somebody it. come up with a new way of phrasing it? If we didn't, we didn't. My new way would be to just delete it. So <laughs> <laughs> I think it was important to some people so, at this table. I'm not going to push that one, but that would be my way of taking care of that comment, would right. be to just delete the whole letter. <laughs> Do people still like it? Do people, if people still want it in there? I mean, I personally am completely agnostic on that particular statement. I, but I if think it's it still sends important, a good message. Leave it in. So. I think I'm caught up. So then we've got liaisons, and I think we dealt with both we'll of those 10.8, Margaret. Oh, okay, so before we get to all of that, we're still in 10.6 because we last week added something in K that the council's never seen. So that will, they will see it as a track change. Yes. They did not ask for this. We came up with this yeah. last time. And so that will simply be a track change yep. that they see versus 10.6. 10.7, we're not changing. Thank you for your comment anyway. And then 10 point, now are we at 10.8? 10 point, yeah. Eight. Which doesn't have any counselor comments. But it does have a comment from Margaret. Yes. And... You know, we were trying we, to be clear there. We can't vote the appointment because it's not our appointment to make. We can just vote who to send to the manager to appoint. So I, I would refuse, reject her. Yes. Re change. Yes, because what we're trying to say is we're not voting that someone will appoint them by sending a memo. That they, we're saying we're appointing them via some kind of vote we take at our meeting. So our right. wording, no. we don't need to belabor, I'm just, just rejecting. Reject we would just reject, I would just reject her change. Okay. And then the council. Wait, we wait, know what we so, meant. So um, I prefer her language. Um, but, but we're but, not voting to appoint, and her new language implies that we are the appointing authority. We're trying Why to work around the charter. 
in our language. I think she did it to go to make us the appointing authority because that made it clearer to her. So what and that's why we worded it in this very odd way <laughs> to say we were voting on which counselors oh. we wanted to recommend to the town. This still is acknowledging the legal, the uh, charter wording. And I think this is entirely clear. I just, I really need to end. Yeah, let's, yeah. Um, Are we rejecting it or accepting it? So I'm rejecting hers because I think We're already it, clear. it was belabeled labor yeah. last time that it was argued that we can't be the appointing authority here, so we can't turn ourselves into, and we came up with this. Yeah. It is odd wording. It's odd, but we, but we like it. Okay. We like odd. So ten, the comments on 10-9, I think we already dealt with the non-voting liaisons. One is, I didn't like drawing straws. President survey members then make a decision. It has worked well so far. This allows the president to work towards balance and fairness overall. And the next comment was, there may be a reason why a counselor has special expertise that makes her the appropriate liaison for a particular multi-member body. There may be links between councils and committees. Um, those factors should be considered in the designation of liaisons. But I think we took care of that with the change we did last week. With the change we did that they wouldn't have seen. Yes. Because, right, except there's a typo in it. But other than that, I is good, I think. The council shall establish a procedure, and then we figure it out. And that just makes it clear. We just have to fix the typo? Yeah, we just have to fix the type, except that change that we made last week, not Margaret's change or anybody else's change, but our new change from last week, and show the council that we changed draw straws to establish a procedure. Does that make sense? Margaret's yes. change, are we going to accept that? If we do, we need to change, get rid no, of the word to. Stop. So, wait, which Margaret change? In 10 9. So, we actually, in 10-9, we are not accepting Margaret's change. We are rejecting Margaret's change. That's unnecessarily restrictive in small rooms, and it's not appropriate to complain about. It was, it was, are not expected, so that's what people need to know. But it's, shall not, like, it's, like, ridiculous. It's rejected. It's rejected. And I fixed the typo, it was a typo, the council shall establish a procedure for assigning liaisons that fairly distributes assignments. Oh, that's assignment. what it was trying to say, that fairly. I, I was typing really fast. I can't believe how much you've incorporated, Kathy. You've done an amazing job. Thanks. <laughs> you've done an amazing, amazing job. I, we got there. Okay, okay, yes, so the only things, more things I'm going to do to this document is remove all the yellows, which I haven't yes. done yet, okay? And to the extent when I read it in simple format, I find literally typos, like yeah. double words where I'll fix yeah. those. Um, otherwise, uh, you'll see it tomorrow, and I'll signal to you all that where there is a V8. It is V8. It's not right. the juice, but it is a V8. Exactly. Waiting for you eagerly. And you, you, you feel, I, I'm amazed by what you've been able to incorporate, Kathy, and then what we get will be the thing that looks different from five, six to now, it, it as should, opposed to all the I think I kept changes. up because I was reading back, so uh, people should look at it tomorrow, particularly uh, Mandy's been following the counselor comments, and Alyssa's almost been editing along with us just to make sure I caught everything. But we should have a draft by tomorrow. And Great. Alyssa and Kathy, like you did last time, would be, us would be useful if you highlight what you want on slides. Yep. And today is Tuesday, so do you, is that fr by Friday morning? Adjourned. What time are we adjourned? I move to adjourn.